All right, good evening. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Thursday, November 16th, 2023 Planning Board meeting. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right. Introduction to board members. To the far left is Don Ganarelli, then Jerry Graybill, Paul Amatucci, myself, Michael LaRue, Phil Roy, Rick, uh, Les Bodwell, and Rick Raines. Uh, we also have Iris Griffith, the code enforcement officer, Terry Wilson, the assistant to coding and planning, and Hannah Watson from SMPDC. Next is we will open up the public hearing for a stop and go Berwick 355 Portland Street conditional use R70 lot 12 zone RCI with so many people we're limiting the speech to five minutes each with an additional three minutes added after everyone has spoken um, you want to just come up uh, we'll first have um, stop and go come and give us a brief description and then we can uh, start with the public information Open the uh, site walk. My name is Michael LaRue. I'm the chair of the planning board. We have my fellow chair people, uh, Rick Raines, Phil, Ro Phil Roy, uh, Jerry Graybill, and Paul Amatucci. Uh, this is just an information uh, gathering session so uh, we can see what they're trying to show us. And um, major questions can be he held on to till the public hearing. Uh, that's when a lot of the questions, comments can be said. Like I said, right now it's just an informational gathering, um, just trying to get what they're trying to uh, picture for us. So um, I'll let you take it. Hey everybody, uh, my name's Wyatt Page. I'm representing Adder Engineering, and I've done all this work for drafting up our plans with Kevin. And I got, I got a, I got a whole bunch of markers to walk you around today. So by all means, let's get right to it. And any questions you have, I have a plan set that I, you know, anyone who wants to see it leaf through it we have that we have some building plans and renderings from uh winter holden uh this is uh rob and brandon and they have a whole bunch of stuff for you guys to look at if you want to get an idea of how the building is actually going to look that might be a little more digestible than what i have but by all means any questions you have we can, anyway, we can um, give them to you absolutely yes um here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab the digital copy from them, so I'm going to give you the winter holding plans that they gave me. I, I sympathize on recovering from a rupture. Yeah. 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 All right, so let's... Uh, Everything here will be at the, the board meeting whenever that... Yep. Next week. Yep. Any any questions that need to be addressed, we'll we'll be happy to speak on. We'll have all of the. If you want copies of the plans, we can have to happily get them to you. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Anything else before we get moving? Okay. So first place we're going to be heading is right down here to the proposed entrance. Initially, we had proposed to use this existing driveway and maintain it. Unfortunately, due to the nature of the Route 4 improvements that the state and the town are looking to make, we ended up having to move, so this entrance here will actually be knocked out. And we will be replacing it with an entrance to be installed right over here on these stakes. These two lowest stakes represent the edge of the property line. Everything beyond that is right of way. I am fairly sure they might have marked the stakes, but 
if you can also picture where these last three or so vehicles are, right about there is where our proposed turning lane is going to go. We don't, we have a, a tentative design based on renderings from Goral Palmer included in our plan set that details about what that's going to look like, but it's still subject to change and I want to make that clear. So but there's just one entrance here? There's just the one entrance here, yeah. And okay. we, I, it would have been nice to be able to do more, but honestly, it was a real struggle and it's still going, it's an ongoing struggle to get things addressed as far as the entrance permit. There's a whole situation where we have to have a certain amount of clearance of the current fund squad. Whereas we're both subdivisions of the same larger old parcel, right. there's a whole there's a whole process, and we're sort of locked into just this one entrance. We didn't even really get to choose exactly where the entrance is. Okay. Like, given our drummers, we'd probably move it. And you know, how wide an entrance is it? Uh, it should be. I want to say it's 24 or 26. I think it's 26 feet. 26 feet. Okay. From edge to edge of the pavement here. Okay. And we also, if you're if just in terms of constraints and that sort of thing. We did actually run renderings for 45-foot trailer trucks. They should be able to get in and out fairly easily. So I don't anticipate there really being any issues as far as traffic getting in and out. Right. Yep. So these these outside stakes marked in the yellow running all the way around the property show you our approximate edge of pavement. Or not approximate, I guess they are stakes out. So it's in fact, these two stakes in here, at least not that one pink one, but these red stakes, there are four corners. Yep. This is all, all these yellow ones are edge of pavement. These red stakes here, this represents where the canopy of the actual gas station will go. Pumps will be underneath. We don't have exact staking for where the pumps are going to be because as I understand it, we're still settling on the exact specs therein. I know that these gentlemen, fine gentlemen, have a whole bunch of uh, concept renderings for how those are going to look. I think that I, I, I didn't get a chance to look. Are the any of the pump renderings included in the? Uh, yeah, yeah. And I know it's mostly for just aesthetic purposes right now. It's yeah, nothing they're, binding. About, they're about three, so they're three stations, double sided. Yep, yep. So if you can imagine the canopy being here, you know, you'd have three gas pumps, you know, service on each side for six total three station sides, here all at the same time. And then if we'll walk a little this way. So if you imagine right here is the edge of the canopy, we've allowed an extra bit of space. Typically, you really only need 26 feet of travel lane. We went a little beyond that because as at least one person has already, I believe it was you, sir, had expressed. And Kevin had asked this when we were doing some meetings earlier. We want to make sure that vehicle flow works nicely, flows naturally. So we went a little extra and we gave it 26 feet of clearance from the edge of the canopy all the way to the edge of the parking. And then, so if you imagine we're walking this way, 26 feet beyond this is would be about where parking starts. And then you have, I want to, I can't remember if it's 18 or 20 feet is the depth of the parking stall. And then an additional eight feet gets us to these red stakes right here. They are marked with B's on the top of the stakes. I believe they all should be marked as such. There's one here. There's one slightly deeper mm -hmm. over, watch your, yep. one slightly deeper over this way. Oh, is that part? And if you look down over here, there, you can see another over this way and another one further into that corner. Those mark the, cor those mark the corners of the building. So if you imagine this, this is our, our the furthest right edge of the building. Edge of pavement truncates right about at that furthest stake over here cutting parallel to the edge of the building. What is the length of the building? Do you know? Uh, it's... Length 125. Width? 125. 125. Yeah. And the depth? 60. And we're, so we're, and we're breaking that up a little bit. When we start to look at the Massey Morris, so there'll be kind of three modules, instead of the main one in the middle, smaller one on the side, and then a lower one on the left side. <laughs> so to kind of break the building off, so it won't be one big structure looking. If anyone wants an idea of what those yeah, look like, of, again, uh, this I'm gentleman small, here. They're small, but you can sort of gather around and take a peek if you want. So there's, so this shows the canopy on the left there, the building there. This is sort of the straight on view without the canopy. So you sort of have the, the main part in the middle. This would be kind of to the left side looking from the road. But you'll have sort of the cashier. There'll be a deli uh, kitchen behind that. Uh, the main store in the middle, and then to the left will be there's office, bathrooms, and behind that is the storage space. So we kind of use the 
So this is mostly customer use and this is more yeah, storage, storage and then and office, and there's a couple bathrooms that'll be kind of bathroom hallway, kind of okay. off to the side there. But yeah, main store in here, and that pushes into the, the cashiers at this this end. So they have a got the layout here just to compare, right? So we've got main store in the middle. So you can see, like he was describing, yes. canopy edge, 26 feet parking stalls. So it's eight feet here at the narrowest. We actually stepped it back, so you've got I think 10 feet here and 10 feet there. Storage, baths, office, main, store space, POS, so they have good vi visual of the pumps as well as the store. This is sort of the pickup, um, the little grill, pickup counter, order and pickup, wear washing, utility space in the corner. There'll be some utility space outside, so there might be a little screening, fence screening here for the utility space. There'll be generator. And... Do you have a dumpster location? Uh -huh. The dumpster would be located, if you can look at this image, it's actually off the top left there. I have here. Yeah, yeah, it's not on our plan. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, there'll be a screen around that too, mm -hmm. hopefully. Yeah. Yep. So right here, you can sort of square things up here. Yep. Our, our building is shown as, you know, a perfect rectangle. Sure. They have I some differences it. here. Our dumpster Back cut there. is located right here with proposed screening. We actually have a detail for the stockade fence as well, perfect. if you want to look at that. Not right now, but gotcha. thank you. Yep. Is that the red post way yes. over there? So for the building size? We can what we'll, we can what we'll, we'll circle back to that as we get down here. I did want to briefly pop over to this corner here because I wanted to give an idea of where exactly this one big pond is going to be. But um we That's will fine. yeah, it's this this red stake down that way and then there's yep. this one sort of straight toward that middle basement window of the uh, the gray building there. Sorry guys. No problem. Off, so I yeah. <laughs> All right, so we poke over this way here. So right about here, you strike a line from this edge of pavement stake to this edge of pavement stake. This is where our travel way ends. It's going to wrap around the building behind. And just to my right here, there's a small lip to allow so like a little bit of a shoulder. And then we have a stormwater detention area right here that the idea is a lot of our runoff is being piped and filtered over here. And then it will be slowly released through a level spreader toward this corner of the parcel down here. And I'll happily, and I'll show you the, uh, the other stormwater fixture that we have down on the opposite end when we circle over there. But for now, we're going to... What's the back end of the parcel here? The back end of the parcel? What, what about it? Where, Where is it? Uh, of all... I they, believe it's staked in there somewhere. I'm seeing... It looked like down there they had some stakes... Past the, the tree there. line there. It's, it's slightly into the tree line. I imagine it's staked. Yeah, it's probably like 10 feet. It's, I, the, it's something like yeah. that, yeah. I mean... Okay. So if we have... So we have a 25 yard setback, so it's, I don't know, it's probably like 12 and a half, 10 feet, something yeah. like that, past the tree line, somewhere around there. Sounds good, thank yep. you. Yep. So will that tree line be taken down? It's, it's gonna be clipped just a little bit, specifically, like, yeah, I mean, the, the most, most of it that's gonna be affected is like this smaller thicket stuff over here. And the main purpose of that is that we, we're not clearing it for the purpose of our road, but we do need to make sure that we have some impervious runoff coming off the back of our building, and we need to make sure that it has a nice clear path down there. We need to have, make sure we have a clear drainage swale that can be maintained as per our uh, operation and maintenance agreement. So there'll be a retention pond here? There's a retention pond right here. Okay. Yep. Yep. And then we're going to head on over this way to the opposite end of the parcel. Watch your feet in all the tall stuff. That's really scary. This is not really scary. Are you in there? I'm the phone for it. Allison. Great ball. Oh, please. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No problem. I think it looks familiar, but I can't figure out why. No, no relation. No relation. Yep. Sometimes I'm so Is getting high ground anyway? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is better.
All right. So. All right, so anyone who is asking where the other end of the building is, this is our front left corner. That red stake back there is the other corner of the building. So if you imagine shooting the line down to those two that we just looked at, roughly rectangular building from that end right over to here. Right here, there's, if you can imagine, a sidewalk running right along where this gentleman is standing here. We'll have a small grassy area right there. I believe we're gonna be adding, it's not shown on these plans, but we're talking about adding a little path to walk over to for anyone, for, you know, employees taking the trash out to the dumpster later, and additionally for anyone to walk out and access parking spaces along this edge over here. The significance of the marks on the trees, is that just the property line, or is that nothing to do with this project? I I didn't hear anything from our surveyors flagging that. I imagine that's not from this project. Okay, no worries. Thank you. Although, that's probably our property line then because that's an old <laughs> so as we get here whoever was asking about the dumpster pad these two corners right here represent the small bump out that we have for our dumpster pad So the dumpster would be approximately right here, screened by a fence as far away from the road and as far away from any stormwater retention as we could possibly get it. Um, so this picture, I'm yep. happy to show you. Yep, no, I got you. Yep. And then additionally, our septic field as proposed. If you see these test pits right here. That's actually good. We have a we have one where the test is just here. In any case, it, the pink ribbon ones there are older. I know the ones all the way on the edge there marks the edge of the property. Do you see how there's, a, there's that one stake without a flag that's running up onto that yep. uh, abutter's property? <laughs> so that one, there's a slight lawn encroachment. Um, we aren't technically proposing to do anything to it. You know, we're not. It's 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 there. Technically, it's ours. We could ask them to change it. We haven't we haven't done anything for that yet. Did I don't. Yep. What is it? Um, so previously, my it's it's my belief that this far stake over here that's flagged with pink and running over to you see that one lone stake. It doesn't have a flag on it. It wasn't set by us, but all the way over there, sort of on the edge of that gentleman's lawn. That stake there, I believe, marks the edge of the property. You can see this is actually pretty faint here, but this line running here is just a slight encroachment of the neighbor's mowed lawn area on our property. So I believe that's that far stake right there. Pop over here. So this here, just to orient yourself for anybody, because I'm going to try my very best to explain where exactly the septic will be. So we're right at this test pit here. That's that pink stake. Corner of the pavement is this right here. So you know, if you shoot a line straight down to that yellow stake, that's the far edge of our pavement on this side. Um, this area here is going to be lightly graded so as to direct stormwater down this way toward our next drainage featured over there. And then this pink stake here, hopefully it's still labeled, but this would be one of our test pits located approximately where we're going to be placing the septic field. Septic field is shown as 15 feet wide by 50 feet long. We kept it outside of the setback as, I mean, we like wanted to keep it up and away from the road up and away from any areas that might have foot traffic but if you can imagine a 15 by 50 field running approximately along here that's about where our septic field will be located and then additionally since we have a very close neighbor we also have some 
plantings proposed to be put along the edge of our property inside of the setback. So we have <laughs> Fraser fir evergreen plantings, 20 feet on center. Those aren't flagged, but if you can imagine those running right along the edge of this uh, this lawn area here, to make sure that this gentleman and their family has their privacy. All right, and then we're gonna head back to no fencing. No fencing yet, just the planting. And if 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 mandated to do so, we could change that. But we we thought the ordinance mandates that we have our our tree screening, and we've done our best to comply to that. So. For the last little bit of significance here, anyone who wants to see, we're currently walking down here. Stormwater flows naturally sort of downhill toward the road. We're redirecting it slightly with the edge of our pavement. And we will have right after the edge of the pavement down here, there will be a larger stormwater retention area, which I will point out once we get there. So right here, this, from this stake to this stake is the end of our parking. We have a little notch right here. And then another set of, another row of parking this way, parallel. So putting out like so. Also, starting approximately where that sleep is there, we have a swale that's going to be running down this way, wrapping around into this space here, just a little bit offset from the edge of the pavement here. That would mark our higher of the two stormwater retention areas. This one is a little bit smaller, and the stormwater from this will be piped from approximately that low spot there. If you look at right where this vehicle is parked, take the closest corner to us it's going to be piped from uh, sorry the opposite corner and it's going to be running down to that other stormwater retention pond that we talked about that's going to be located down close to the kind farms anyone have any questions about any of this? Anyone have any questions? all right so that's that covers the limit of everything that we have staked if anyone has any questions about where about layout about any of the plans if they want a copy of the plans we can send them to you digitally if you want physical copies we can get you those at another date um i'm happy to give this one out i know it's a little wrinkled and wet but if anyone additionally, wants the packet for this was on i'll take that so you guys that's can that's access that's that they're in the packet thank you well. yep. and that's the same one so. that's included in the packet I okay the great same file. Yep. perfect oh yeah Good. Don't worry about it. I was a minute or two late myself. I read these plans and then the colored plans that this gentleman has. Are those all online now too? Um, I don't believe the elevations are because those are not the formal elevations. I don't believe those were provided to us yet. Those yeah. will be put online when we receive a copy of whatever they finalize. But the plans that whatever is in the packet that the board members will receive to review will be put online. Yeah. yeah. If it's and anything it's, that's not already online, will be added. Uh, okay. When you and something of of note for that, uh, for those of you that are not used to doing it, when you go to uh, government <coughs> planning board, uh, you can look at agendas, find the agenda with the stop and go on it. Look at the packet, and then if there's another little so it'll say agenda packet, if there's a section that says more, whenever Terry, not this Terry, but our planning administrator assisting gets additional information after the packets have gone out she uploads it under that more tab so make sure if that, that's there that you guys click that as well okay yeah. is it possible to have that uploaded by tuesday because people would want to review it before the public hearing the the if it's on the agenda then it's already in the, it's in the packet then it would already be uploaded. I believe she uploaded the package yesterday because we're closed today. Okay. So it should already be there. If we get anything additional, she will likely upload it before the meeting. Um, she typically tries to get things on as soon as she gets them. 
Um, but yeah, anything that we're, anything that the board has to consider, yeah. we've been getting to them seven days before the meeting. So anything that they're going to be reviewing for this should already be on there. Okay. Great. Thanks. You're welcome. And just to clarify on that, we, you know, we have all of our all of the plans that uh, Brandon has to show. They're currently just draft. I don't imagine they'll change very much. They've even changed since the last time I saw them a couple days ago. They're even more fleshed out. I don't want to put a deadline on them, but we're trying to get them to you as quick as we can. So I I don't want to I, I can't I, I can't speak for whether or not they'll be up by Tuesday, but I imagine we will have copies at the time of the meeting. And I don't, I don't know. if we can get it before, we'll just upload them as soon as we have them ready. Yep. Yeah, which if, I totally not, if they're not available by the time of the meeting, would it be a reasonable ask for you guys to make some large scale? That would be. Is there a digital? Uh, could we, is there a TV we can project? You to? mean large scale for the board, and yeah. then maybe some no, this, size, like this size? I'm saying large scale for, for people? the public comment the public. and the public that are coming, easy. so they have something oh, to look at. Yeah, if and we they'll... could have one posted, I think that would. I thought you meant for handout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, anything we'll over 11 by 17 is going to be the big ask for right. COVID. And we'll try to bring that. Yeah, we can bring it more too. Yeah, and if just, you... Small ones are fine for us. But yeah. Just yeah. No, I, I thought visual, you meant for public handout. So if you guys do bring something and you have an 11 by 17 copy of it, I can also make copies for the public too, if you guys don't have enough copies or what have you. Is there a TV want. screen or projector I, I was just going to say, um, BCM can project it via our zoo we'll if you're using that zoom that night they can share it right on zoom Excellent. Okay. perfect yeah. perfect yeah. all right we'll find a way better living through technology and what's the date on that no through bcm <laughs> sorry <laughs> you are you're our technology yeah. for the public hearing you were asking yeah, yeah. so that's a week from today i uh, was it 7 p.m 6 30 6 30 thank you when the meeting starts yeah. right on for 6 30 is when the meeting starts and i don't know where we're placed on the agenda but It'll, the agenda, I'm sure, will be out in The agenda's shorter. already posted online. Yeah, imagine that. Um, I don't believe there's a whole lot ahead of you guys. All right. Um, not, don't quote right. me on that, though. Because I would never. Today's the day off, guys. That's <laughs> yeah. why I was late. That's why I'm running, I'm, I'm running ragged trying to remember. But I think we only had a couple things on the agenda anyway. So shouldn't be too, too long. Too. All right. Well, 4.31, and I'll close this site walk. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Wyatt Page, representing Adder Engineering and Kevin Patel, uh, the owner of Stop and Go Berwick. And for anybody who's not up to speed, our proposal is a 7,500 square foot building, which is a convenience store with 1,500 square feet of storage in a 6,000 square foot convenience store building. There's a gas station that goes with it with three gas pumps servicing up to six vehicles. And the idea of this convenience store and the scope of it is to be able to provide not only a gas station and a convenience store, but a sort of market location as well with deli, some produce, and to be able to provide anyone traveling along Route 4 with a nice place to stop and to get hopefully more than just, you know, crackers and booze, ideally, is what we're hoping for. Um, we have some nice concept drawings, including a floor plan that were uh, put together by uh, Winter Holbin and detailing the layout of the building as well as a rendering of what the building will look like approximately once it is done. For anyone that wants to see that, I'm sure there will be um, some questions about that therein, but I know there have been, I, I, I read, I, I did my homework, I read ahead and saw that there were some of Butters that specifically had some qualms about the size of it. If you want an idea of what we're doing with that space, it's here. And we are happy to answer any questions relating to what we're aiming to do and how. Okay, thank you. Could I just ask before you walk away, so the renderings that you have here are pretty much the final, what this building is, is actually going to look like and square footage? Because I think the square footage has changed since you guys initially uh, come in here as well. Hello, my name is Robert Whitemeyer. I'm with Winter Holbin. I'm the architect on the project. Uh, to answer your question directly, uh, right now we're currently sort of in the concept schematic plan layout. 
Um, so I would probably say with pretty good confidence that as we get into um, specific types of equipment that's getting in there, specific types of services are getting provided in there, that this will change. But the overall concept, the idea, the appearance of it, um, I would say you know, Square footage. we want to keep it consistent on that. Square footage, um, I mean, I could tell you right now the square footage on this is less than the 7,500 that was on the initial. Right there, what you're looking at plan-wise, I think we're at like 7,300 right now. Okay. Um, so we're continuing the massage and um, work it. I guess, I guess my question just is it's not going to be 8,500 at the next meeting. Okay. That, that's really pointedly my question. Yeah. You know, I, I don't anticipate it growing. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, to speak to that, uh, as the engineer that did the drafting for all of our engineering designs, we wouldn't be having any surprise changes without significant documentation and a revision to our application, which we won't, because our stormwater design and all of the way that we've laid out our site is entirely contingent upon the size of the building. If anything, it would only get smaller. It would not get larger under any circumstances. Okay. There, and again, as uh, Mr. Weidemeyer had expressed, We've changed the, the, you know, the building is no longer a perfect rectangle. It's changed around a little bit. There may be some additional changes as they work through their concept designs, but this gives you a pretty good idea of what things are going to look like, and it will not be expanding any larger, as you would and, that, and, that, and that's basically what I'm looking for, is this is generally what we're looking at so that, you know, we know exactly, you know, I say exactly, but we know relatively what it is we're talking about, what size, what the building's going to look like, et cetera. Yes. Thank you. Mr. Chair, we yeah. have several that were emailed in, so let us know when you want us to. Okay, we'll do them after, mm -hmm. the, after the public has something to say. <laughs> Who's first? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you can come up in the panel. Thirteen Circuit Road. Uh, I wrote up a little thing so I could stay uh, on point. Um, the lot, uh, proposed lot, is right behind my house. Every single window in the back of my house will be looking right at the lot. It used to be part of the house that I own. Um, I guess it was sold off before I bought it, and uh, uh, so it's kind of a sad, sad day for me uh, and my family. Is uh, you know every window is going to be go from a por like a picturesque portrait of the main hayfield to a modern, you know, very, I'm sure, brightly lit <laughs> gas station and uh, petrol station sitting on the, the aquifer that, that feeds my well and, and my family drinks it. You know, I'm vehemently opposed to this. Um, <coughs> I couldn't say it anymore. <laughs> uh, it's, there's just so many concerns we have, but the biggest one is um, the drinking water. There's so much spillage. Uh, you put asphalt in anything. I don't care if you even have, you know, petroleum, which you're going to be putting there. Um, you're going to salt your, you know, you're going to put asphalt down. Uh, you're going to have thousands of cars on it all the time. You're going to have delivery trucks on it all the time. You're going to have dumpsters being emptied on it all the time. You've got trash bins. Um, we're, in a, we're in a wind tunnel 
that we live in, uh, basically because of the farming fields and the, and the golf course. So the wind is just constant, and it's great. But um, with trash, it's going to blow it everywhere. Uh, we get trash now. I can't imagine once we have you guys in your trash bin at every you know pump that you have, as well as you know the cardboard that the guy make uh, the girl making twelve bucks an hour is throwing out in the dumpster. I'm sure that it's going to take wind and be right in the back of my house pretty quick. Um, and again, the the you know, my biggest point is the drinking water. Right now, um, you know, we drink, we, we bathe, we drink it with it. Uh, I know my wife is, is I mean, she couldn't be here, but um, she's very concerned about that. Um, and uh, there's a couple other concerns, you know, less important than the drinking water, but, um, you know, important to probably a lot of the neighbors is um, property values. I mean, uh, you look out the back of my house, like I said, the seven windows that are in the back of my house, from a, uh, the bedrooms, the bathrooms, the living room, all see this field. Now they're going to see this. Um, right away, my property value is instantly going to go right down as soon as anyone, if I was to go to sell this, and they're like, oh, you got to stop and go right there. Um, it's not, I mean, there's a reason why, you know, you don't see a lot of portraits painted of gas stations. You do of haying fields. <laughs> you know, there's a reason why. Um, it's not something you want in your backyard and uh, basically 40 feet from the back of my house. Um, also, you know, so right there we got to take a hit in our property values. Um, and then we got to deal with your trash, which you know is going to happen. I know you can mitigate some of it and say, oh, I'll put covers. We'll make sure we stay on top of it. Again, you got low wage employees that are going to be emptying your trash. You're going to have a, a rush at a certain time. You only have so many trash barrels that get filled. Every gas station I've been to has an overflowing trash. That I guarantee you if you go out to the closest one here, there's going to be one of the trashes that will That's a constant battle they have. Um, and then in addition to that, I, I was at the site walk and all the parking, I see how you, you're setting up the parking. A lot of it is just facing my house. So right now I have no headlights hitting my house. I have no lights. I look out the back, it's dark, other than an occasional car going by. But now I'm gonna have thousands of headlights hitting me on a daily basis. Uh, we're gonna lose all of our, you know, it's basically light pollution. Uh, there's a reason why there's organizations called Dark Skies that are out there because they, they're trying to keep light from polluting into other neighbors and everything else, as well as aiming up. And then, um, in addition to that, you're going to have just your normal uh, type of noise pollution. We Kind Farms moved in. Um, they had an alarm go off constantly. They fixed it finally. Uh, it's a nice looking place. They couldn't have done it any better. It fits perfect. Like the, the whole decor of Kind Farms fits perfect. And, uh, you know, in Maine, looks great. Not like that. <laughs> you know, a modern thing that, I, I don't know, it doesn't fit in a Maine cow town. It doesn't look anything like we have any neighbors or anything else. It's like not even trying. Cumberland Farms at least makes things clapboard and look, tries to look like a house or something, but this, I don't know what that's supposed to be. Um, looks like a bomb shelter to me, and that's gonna be, again, in my backyard with a bunch of lights and everything else. Um, so we're gonna have alarms going off now. We're gonna have diesel trucks idling in the winter, you know, while they make deliveries. You're gonna have Frito-Lay out there, Pepsi, Coke, uh, every vendor running their, their vehicles, so now we're going to have diesel exhaust constantly because they're going to be sitting there. Uh, you're also going to have the noises at night. You're going to have dumpsters being emptied. None of this was there before. This hay field has been pretty quiet so far, <laughs> you know, with the very good neighbors. Um, so it's going to be a shock to the system and naturally, um, you know, like the concerns I brought up. But I just don't see how you can get by the, the water. You know, how can we get by a drinking water, putting petroleum? I can see that you can say, all right, well, we can deal with the trash. We'll mitigate this. We'll mitigate that. How do you mitigate the water? There's just no, there's just no way. I mean, there's, you know, I work for the government and, you know, the shipyard, and we do all kinds of things. I do con huge contracts. We do so many mitigation things. And you know what? These, these companies, General Dynamics, Electric Boat, we do a lot of general mitigating. None of them can be absolutely 100%. You can never mitigate down to zero. And here we are putting, putting a, a gas station on an aquifer that feeds our wells. 
You know, that's the one thing that you're like, okay, we can mitigate, we can deal with your less than zero mitigation on trash, light pollution, you can, put up fence, you can put up some trees, you can guarantee, you know, you can do different things like that, but there's no way to mitigate the water. I just don't see any way around it. So that's my piece, and <laughs> sorry to start off so negative to, <laughs> to you guys, but I have to, I have to tell you the truth, and uh, uh, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm uh, Gary's neighbor. I'm Five Circuit Road. Can you say your name, please, sir? Steve Moisson. I'm pretty much going to be right across from it, too. And part of my concerns are, yes, the water. I'm really concerned about the water. But um, I've been in the house for quite a few years. I've probably had about 20 cars on my yard, literally right up in my yard because of the Circuit Road, you know, in the um, Blackberry Hill turn there. And Kind Farm came in. It's a real nightmare mowing my lawn. So I don't mow with the traffic because they have dirt. If you know that turn, people make the left hand turn, they go down the side. They're on, I mean, I have a shop door with stickers on it from the car windshields from my lawn. So this thing's gonna go in. I wanna know if there's gonna be a traffic light here because that's gonna be a nightmare. I'm just telling you. Because Kind Farm came in all those people that set up for Kind Farm, that bank, and that place, the Blackberry Turn, I don't mow with the traffic because I've had them come on my lawn with me mowing the lawn. My wife says, mow against it, you know, mow with it. So that's my concern. And the water, you know, it's right there at my backyard, and I have a well, I have a shower. Going up? Raised Island going up? Yeah, Mark, well, I don't know, but I don't want to. Mark, it's his turn. I don't want to I don't wanna <laughs> figure out, you know, the, the traffic thing later because I want to know that and the water thing I have a shallow well so you know I just want to that's all I have to say thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you Steve um, Denise Mallet Lovebrook Road 47 Lovebrook Road I'm not in a butter um, and I won't necessarily repeat all of them although I agree with those issues um, just a couple of things. They're sort of comments, sort of questions. Um, I do agree that the, my number one concern is the traffic. And even long before um, Kind Farms went in, I think most of us are probably still traumatized in some way of losing somebody along that stretch. So there's, it can't possibly put in something of that size without really looking at traffic speed, lights. I'm not sure what has to be done, but it. I can't imagine that this would work without some modification. Um, the I'm curious what the proposed hours would be. Does anybody? That comes something? in. We we answer after the public. Great. Okay. So that's my question: is what are the hours going to be? Um, and then the um, light is is kind of the big issue for me. So um, I'm down Lovebrook Road. A mile down the road and I can still see you know some of the lights from the storage units that and I years ago came in and asked you guys about it read the ordinance supposed to be downward facing blah 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 and I keep looking at the lights thinking these are not downward facing and when I came in and asked if I don't know if any of you were even here but I think the answer I got was yeah that wasn't done right and so you know my question I don't see any lights on any of these drawings so you know it's I don't I love the dark sky thing I would love it if we could you know maintain that I don't really expect that we can but there are a lot of good new technologies to be able to develop and not just completely destroy our we do have a beautiful night sky here so um, I would be that's partly a comment partly a question because I don't see any of that um, on the drawings here so those are my those are my concerns. I know we have to grow and develop, but I do hope that we can do it in a proportional size. This does seem gigantic. Thank you. Nobody else is moving, so I guess I will. <laughs> Hello, um, Mary Ignatiatis, 23 Overlook Drive. Uh, 
this is the first time I'm I'm seeing this with regards to the size and with regards to what it is fundamentally um, as a young person who has chosen to invest building a life here in the town I I'm concerned with every building that goes in, every business, that it is something that will allow the town to grow in a positive way into the future. Um, I have a background in economic development here in the state of Maine, and it's very important to me that the town wisely helps businesses choose to install infrastructure uh, that will meet our future needs, not just our needs now. So, you know, something that's not gonna be a burden on our energy supply, something that's going to allow us to fuel the electric cars that are, we all know are coming very quickly as the state of Maine continues to roll out that infrastructure, as electric cars continue to get cheaper. You know, that's not today, it might not be five years from now, but it probably will be 10 years from now. And we wanna think about, are we attracting truck drivers, like big long haul truck drivers 10 years from now? Or are we attracting people who want to build a life here too? And so that's something that that I think about when I look at these types of projects, and I would encourage everyone else to think in that sort of 5, 10, 15, 20 year time horizon as well, thinking about the kind of infrastructure that we're gonna need then, and whether this project as it is designed currently meets that, or whether it will need further adjustment. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a concerned citizen. <clears throat> My name is Peter Cook. <clears throat> I'm a resident of Berwick, and I'm extremely impressed with the comments of my friends and neighbors who spoke before me this evening. I think you're really right on target. I'm going to use my age as a sword as well as a shield tonight. <clears throat> Good evening. The allotment of five minutes response time is totally un unreasonable, unrealistic, and unfair for citizens to be able to react to the wealth of environmental data relevant to this proposed project. On behalf of our community, I'm going to take a different tact that is indeed relevant and important for your consideration this evening. Forty-five years ago, I was on the board of Historic Boston. We were negotiating with the BRA, the Boston Redevelopment Authority, to save and revitalize two empty historic buildings, Quincy Market and Faneuil Hall. We were successful in the restoration and planned adaptive use, yet we were concerned about the surrounding environment for parking, for historic preservation, and public space utilization. The huge ad adjacent that came later a uh, property, Government Center, continues to this day to be a massive city problem. The planning board and government officials failed to consider the big picture. Closer to home, in South Berwick, Dunkin' Donuts is in total compliance. It's a viable business. Yet that drive through facility is wedged between an elementary school and an important colonial residence that is critical to the historic fabric and character of the town. The drive through lane is in danger, is a danger um, during the day for because of the high children foot traffic at critical times. The planning board needed to consider the big picture. Route 4, South Berwick, we all know it, recently put in a new residential street near the town line near Outlook Golf Course. That means, on the plus side, added tax revenue, as well as more housing. It also means 50 more cars spilling into Route 4 to, toward the legendary South Berwick backup. <laughs> Appropriately and ironically, the name of that street 
is bittersweet. <laughs> it seems to me that the planning board and community failed to consider, once again, the big picture. Berwick planning is at a critical planning juncture. We are growing in spite of ourselves and with our families growing as well. But we must look beyond the regs, regs and consider the community's future. Many years ago, the state of Maine engaged me and a colleague to do two two-day workshops for planning boards, commercial and residential real estate developers, and the public if they so desired. We did these for several years. They were extremely popular. A key component of the program was that in planning, communities need to consider functional use, appropriate aesthetic or scale, as well as the very important social context. These three considerations are just as important as the attendant engineering data. The Cumberland Farms gas station in our town here in Berwick is a constant traffic jam of merchandise uh, trucks trying to unload, cars waiting half in the street to get to the pumps and locked doors for access to the building. That gas station convenience store needed better planning. The bottom line of our hard work that we did over the years in developing a comprehensive plan was to retain our rural, historic, traditional, small town, country character that some people have already spoken to. Scale has to be considered. For example, the new huge blue metal house of Oak Gym is totally out of scale in a semi-residential setting. It is also a blatant socio-visual intrusion to the concept that we're looking for in, a community, in the community hope for waterfront park area across the street, our goals, our future. The a huge Route 4 gas station convenience store complex will negatively impact the residents, as you've heard, existing thriving businesses, traffic flow, our environment, and our community's desire for a peaceful, rural, historic setting to be preserved. I ask that the planning board consider the desires and wills of the community, the big future picture as well, instead of favoring a commercial proposal that will negatively impact all of us in so many ways. Thank you, and I would welcome communication to me from my fellow citizens. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Brian Barrington, Coolidge Law Firm, 98 High Street. I'm a counsel for the Patels. You want a mega corporation coming in, you want Cumberland Farms, you have a stretch of road, Route 4, let's get real, Route 4 is a major intercity transportation route. If you want to have electric cars, you need to have charging stations. If you currently have gas cars, you need to have gas stations. This is a store being built by someone who lives in Rollinsford, has a store in Rollinsford, has a store in Elliott. It's smaller, it's local, it's a family business. This is not a mega corporation. You are going to have, because of the need on Route 4, someone's going to come in with something a whole lot bigger and a whole lot more complex. They want to actually do a market. They want to have vegetables. Now, this is not against zoning. It's a special exception on the planning board. It wants to be a market for food. It had, gas is a requirement of transportation. Certainly nothing this business will do will increase the traffic on Route 4. It's already there. And so really as the town grows and the reality of Route 4 is before you, you want to have a local business person who lives locally right across the border in Rollinsford and has stores and responsive or you want some mega corporation to come in and do the same thing. 
In terms of groundwater, there are huge requirements by the state, by the main DES, for double, double-sided tanks, for groundwater and drainage and drainage management and capturing of them. These things are all well known and scientifically done. Right now, you have a thousand gas tanks a day going by, and any one of them, as you've heard multiple times, misses, goes into people's houses. Every single one of those potential car crashes could go into groundwater. And there's almost no way to control that. Also, by having a business there, um, you know, I'm a runner, I've run there. That's a really fast road right now. You start adding businesses, and people may actually see that there's traffic coming in, traffic going out, and it'll, you know, it's going to slow down. Uh, but, you know, as we know, people are going 75, 80 there when they hit the right of way and they just keep on going. You know, people's houses are already on Route 4. They're not out in the middle of the country, in the middle of the woods. And so we ask that you allow this project to go forward for the Patels. You can work on the design, but I can tell from having been their attorney for 15 years, you have an applicant who is local and responsible. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So, Allison Graybill, 10 Pond Road. I live in Berwick. Uh, if you do, for those of you who don't know, Pond Road is right across the street from Kind Farms. So, I agree with everything that my neighbors have said. Um, it, I guess what I wanted to ask of the applicant and the planning board is really what's the compromise here you know it is a huge building uh, I think the architect said it's a modern uh, twist on a barn uh, I don't get that vibe um, you look at kind farms and kind farms did a very nice job to assimilate themselves uh, into the community um, you know to the attorneys points you know, I don't know how much the planning board can impact this project. Uh, I know you'll be thorough and you'll look at all the regulations and make sure that you protect our interest and the interest of the applicant. Um, and so I guess I just say to the Patels, I ask you to really reconsider this design. Um, the size of the building is huge. I walked. Um, I, I was at the site walk, and what really stuck out to me, what really stood out to me, is that every square foot of that property is being used. And so I don't know if the gentleman's here who lives in the gray house, but the parking, you you <clears throat> you drive in, which is only one entrance. So I don't understand why there's only one. It seems like it would be better if there were two. But you drive in and you park to the left. Um, pardon me? No, we're not. Keep, we don't. Keep speaking. Don't talk, don't talk in the audience when people are speaking, please. It muddies the microphone recording. I mean, for you're welcome to address that. If, it's, if the safety's not yeah, an issue. They'll, they'll address yeah. it in all business. Mm -hmm. So my point being is when you, when you drive in and you take a left, there's parking there. So the lights will shine right on that gray house. And they have proposed putting trees and so I, it was nice to hear at the site walk that a fence would be considered. Um, I, I think that that just really needs to be considered. So, so then I thought, well, why does parking have to be there? Why can't parking be on the side of Kind Farms? That would just be a neighborly thing to do. And then I realized it's probably because this building is so big and that's just the best spot, that's the best spot for the parking to be. But if you were to reduce the size of the building, which would be in, um, co which would conform to the ordinance that we just passed, I just think it would be, to your attorney's point, a neighborly thing to do. I'm sure you're good people. It's just hard for us to welcome this project, whether it's on Route 4 or not. It is where we live. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, I'm Nancy Cook. Um, I didn't plan to speak, um, and I'll try not to repeat what's been said, but I do want my voice heard as well. Um, some of my concerns are the same as others. Um, I don't live in the neighborhood there, but if it were my neighborhood, I would be devastated. I would be devastated that a commercial building could be uh, so close to my home. Um, I realize this might be water under the bridge. Um, it might be a result of our lack of planning in the past, um, but I would beg the Patels to move up Route 4, maybe stay in Berwick if they can. Um, Route 4 is a long stretch between uh, South Berwick and North Berwick. There are parts of the road that have many uh, commercial type of ventures on them. Uh, for example, the storage units, the bus station, the feed store. Um, there's a long stretch that is not residential. And I think that is where a building like this should be. Not as close to the South Berwick Village um, or to the end of Blackberry Hill Road where we have um, residences. And fortunately, we still have some nice open space that we talk about wanting and wanting to keep here in Berwick and South Berwick. Um, I, I know that there will always be stores to come. Um, it did surprise me um, about this market just because I feel like um, on each of the legs of the South Berwick Village um, unit, uh, we have a Cumberland Farms, a Cumberland Farms, and a nice Nature's Way market right in the village. So it's not as though we can't uh, get these things within, I would say, it, two miles. All right. Now, I know people traveling might not want to stop in the village. They'd rather stop on an open stretch. But again, slide it down, slide it down the road, please, if still possible. Um, I would also, and I know you know this, speak to the traffic on Route 4. Um, it's really fast. I travel on it every day to, to work. Um, I do make the left-hand turn coming out of South Berwick onto Blackberry Hill Road. Um, every day, scared, waiting um, to make my left with cars beside me. Um, I don't know that every business on Route 4 can have a turning lane. <laughs> Be sure, certainly nice if they did. It's a frightening road. Um, I've written numerous times to the main DOT. They know me so well that they actually call me now when I write to them. I've written to them about the train tracks in Berwick, the train tracks in North Berwick, um, safety concerns when I see a tree hanging over the road. Um, they're very responsive. I've written to them um, about a couple of years ago now about the Blackberry Hill turn and the, the need for a uh, a turning lane, a left-hand turn lane there. Um, they have it on their radar. They've said it's not um, the most um, needy <laughs> site in the state. So it hasn't been, um, it isn't, it's on, they know about it, but it's not on their radar to fix it. Um, what else was I going to say? I know people who've been rear-ended there uh, personally. Um, I think I've forgotten something I want to say, but I'll stop there. Um, Blackberry Hill Road, what was I going to say? Oh, anyway. Okay, so yes. Um, imagine there are people involved in the, um, in the traffic concern and in and out and all that, but um, all along there we do have a, have a concern. And, of course, everyone knows there's the daily concern with the people commuting. But then the weekend concern, as someone mentioned, with the South Berwick, North Berwick traffic backing up is pretty, pretty significant. So um, please do what you can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, I'm Pat Bovere, I live on Blackberry Hill, off Blackberry Hill Road. 
Um, so a couple things that I'm hoping that um, the planning board makes sure they cover. Um, police, um, different uh, police opinions about the area, not just accidents right there at that section, but all along Route 4. Um, I hope that you'll plan on contacting the South Berwick Water Supply about their wells and inform them of this project. Um, I'm hoping that there's some kind of liability bond or insurance that the Patels will be putting up for closure of this station when the time comes, for whatever reason it is. Um, I think it's very important um, when I see the design of the gas station. Um, it certainly isn't, you know, an Irving Station appearance, but it is certainly is not what our comprehensive plan and our um, design standards and, and that type of thing is looking for. We're looking for something that um, looks New England, that looks rural, southern Maine. Um, you know, it, it's like start over <laughs> because, this, you know, this isn't it. Um, so please reconsider the entire look of the place. Um, I would I would have to look for a while as far as um, the store design and whatever. But from what people are saying, I'm concerned um, if if so much of the parcel is covered. Um, I just want to make sure that um, the right amount is covered. I know only a certain amount of a parcel can be covered with stuff. <laughs> And then I, you know, I don't know how I don't know those rules, um, but if so much of this is going to be covered with parking and 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 things, hopefully, you know the, that can be considered. Um, and I also would like to think that there is something that can be done about the water. Um, this area has had. Um, some experience with uh, problems with leaking gas tanks. Um, North Berwick had a problem up on Cabbage Hill um, many years ago with just a old fashioned kind of gas tank, not the kind that's double walled like today. Um, it re the pollution spread a mile um, to the wells in, in a mile radius and North Berwick um, had to end up running um, a water line extension from from there to remedy the problem. I don't really think Berwick has the capability of doing that if there would be some kind of an issue with this. Uh, this is something that, you know, it's, you don't go back from it. It's irrevocable if this happens. Another interesting thing that I just heard about was that um, not in our right in our area, but over at Mr. Mike's. I don't know if you're familiar with that store um, across from the pool in Dover, um, uh, at that intersection. They also had uh, just a pinhole leak, I think, in one of their tanks around the year 2000, um, and it contaminated the surrounding wells around there. It doesn't have to be a very big leak. It's only some infinitesimal amount of gasoline if it gets into your water system that that's it. Um, the town in the past has taken a strong stance on water and I hope that they do it again. They required, I don't know how many years ago, whenever Sunrise Hill Mobile Home Park came into um, existence, um, they required them to have um, testing wells and things like that in order I don't know exactly what, but things that could be monitored um, over and over um, to make sure that there was no problem there. This is nothing new for the town of Berwick to make sure that their water supply are guaranteed. Um, also, um, here from um, 
from the golf club. Things were required of them. I don't know if that was Berwick or South Berwick. Um, and they do, they will, they do monitor, well monitoring um, every six months from now till eternity, as long as they're there. Um, so people, whether, I know, like I said, whether it's Berwick or South Berwick, people don't fool around with water. So you only have one chance with your water. And um, granted, the new, the new tanks are double walled and have alarms and all this stuff. You know, we all know the story. It's, it's man-made. Errors can occur in, in construction. And it only takes, like at Mr. Mike's, a pinhole leak somewhere in someone's welding job or whatever. And, you know, that's that. So um, I hope that you guys take a very strong approach to the water. Um, there, are, there are some kind of um, hydrogeological things that can be done. I'm not sure. I don't know. It's not my business, but um, I don't know about it. But you can put in some kind of wells um, that will monitor and catch any kind of um, pollution that might occur. Um, and hopefully in time, um, don't be afraid to require that, um, especially because that area of South Berwick in, in not only affects the South Berwick wells, um, but it affects a couple working farms in that area. And, um, you know, it, anyway, it's critical. I also... Um, I also know that um, on, in November, the town has voted upon certain um, rules and conditions that they would like to have gas stations have, and also some design standards for um, housing or bu buildings that are going out on the, uh, our roofs. And I know that this was... Um, this was put into a, this was per, you know, they asked for their permit or whatever it is, their application, they put in their application before any of this went on. Um, but I hope um, the Patels realize that the town has spoken about what they would like to have and, um, and following our comprehensive plan about what we want for our town and open space and uh, rural spaces, and um, I'm hoping that that the more the applicant complies with what the town wants, then it'll be better for the town. It'll be better for the applicant's business, as people will be happy to support efforts made to make the project the best that it can be in Berwick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Roz Edelberg. I have a question for the board. As it could you repeat your name, ma'am? I'm sorry. Pardon? Could you repeat your name, please? Roz, R O Z. Edelberg, E-D-E-L-B-E-R-G. Thank you, ma'am. I'm curious. Um, I've been in town a few years, but I'm curious, does the planning board or who is it that would have, does anybody have a master plan for the town of what you see as far as what you would like to see growth and how we would like it to grow and what you would want to put into the town in order for it to grow? And does this fit in the master plan? Okay, and also, I don't know if Envision Berwick is part of doing stuff as far as a master plan. I have to ask them myself, but I don't know if they work in conjunction with you or who, who does this? Who's in charge of, you know, deciding what you want to see for Berwick, in the, not just now, but for the future? Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.
Anyone else? Hi, I'm Kristen Moisen on Five Circuit Road. My husband spoke earlier. Um, I guess what my concerns are are also with the traffic, too. When they came in and, and widened the road a few years ago, I thought for sure they were going to put a turning lane onto Blackberry Hill because, as he said, there are cars all the time that end up in our lawn. God forbid somebody end up dying. Our friend did die down um, in front of the Kine Farm. I think it was last year. Um, but that is my concern. So if there's all this space going into a building, but how much parking is going to be there? Are there going to be people hanging out on Route 4 <laughs> uh, trying to get in? You know, um, that's my concern. Or they ended up over in my lawn. Um, but also, there's a lot of people who cut down our road. And I've lived there since 2008, and our road has, not, has yet to be paved. There's always pieces of asphalt everywhere. I have fallen myself and, and have hurt myself on that road. Um, so I'm imagining there's going to be more traffic cutting down our road to maybe turn around and get there to the store or whatever. Um, so that is, you know, a concern with the traffic. Um, and, uh, yeah, my taxes keep going up. They've doubled almost since I've moved there. And um, I'd like to see my road get paid at least once. <laughs> so if there's going to be a new project here while you're at it, we can go over there and do that too. Um, but, you know, like what other people have said, you know, like the building, like how Kine Farm looks, it's very nice, you know, to have that um, kind of vibe, that feel. Um, Originally, I had heard that there were going to be three pumps, and then I heard six. So I'm assuming there's going to be it's double sided, right? Three pumps per thing. Okay. Um, so yeah, that is my concern is definitely you know the traffic, and um, also the water too. Um, right now, I drink it right from my faucet. <laughs> we used to get it from our fridge and had a filter on it, but I don't even need a filter on my faucet. So I'm hoping that. I'm kind of thinking that if this happens, that I'm going to have to put something on there because I don't trust, <laughs> um, sadly. Um, but, uh, yeah, so those are my concerns, and uh, I think um, I've touched on everything that I can think of. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Stina Brazelton, and I live on Berwick Road. So I'm not in a butter, but immediately I'm concerned about the traffic and that intersection that's already there, adding another one, which in, in effect something that big adds. And I don't understand why we need something that big. It seems really out of place. Um, and it seems that we have Cumberland Farms, Gateway. Um, do we really need another fuel station? So, And I'm also worried hugely about property values as I watch for the last 25 years what's happened in Berwick when in the incredibly tiny amount of hair <coughs> that goes to open spaces and things that make the town what we all came here to find. So, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Minutes and going. <coughs> well, I have a question for you, Pat. Do you no longer want me to read your statement that you had sent? Oh. Or do you still? We have five. Do they all have the statement? I, I have a copy. We do. They do yeah, all yeah. have a copy. Yeah. So. You have a copy as well. But it's, it's, if you want me to read it, I can read it. If you want to just continue to speak, you can continue to speak. I, well, if, if the chair allows you to, but. I just needed to know that regardless before I get reading these statements. Oh, are you reading a bunch of statements that you yes. received? 
Yes. Okay. Um, I do would like to say one other thing. Okay, just be quick because you're, I you're already. I just minutes. I feel that. Um, you gotta speak to the mic. Oops, sorry. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, not enough emphasis has been placed on the size of the building. Um, I feel like, um, you know, like I said, I haven't had a chance to look at the building or whatever. But to me, the size is something way bigger than, um, or that would be appropriate for um, what what we would want and um, the, the new um, ordinance is requiring 3,000 feet or square feet or less and this is 6,000 plus 1,500 storage so I hope that's considered okay. thank, thank you, you thank you Right. If you want to read, okay. Just so, just so I'm clear, am I reading the statement from the the Bobears as well? Uh, yeah. Just all the statements that I'll uh, read. All of them. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. So, uh, from Marie Miller, 13 A Moore Street. I have followed along and been in support of the increased regulations for future gas stations moving into Berwick. I understand that citizens worked with our code enforcement officer and planning board to write these new regulations and have them ready for the town to vote in the November 7th election. Along with many other residents, I voted in favor of amending the land use ordinance to adopt these new regulations. I learned recently that because of the paperwork for the new stop and go with gas station moving in came in before the 7th, that this business will not need to follow the new size restrictions and is more than double in size with the new regulations will allow. I am hopeful that the owner of the stop and go will take into consideration the fact that Berwick residents voted on a maximum square footage of 3,000, which is in line with the size of his other gas station locations. Our neighbors and community members have worked hard over the past several months to put into regulation restrictions on gas stations that will help to reduce environmental impacts as well as other negative side effects of a gas station moving in, decrease property value, light pollution, increase traffic. I urge the owner of the stop and go to listen to this community and build the stop and go in line with the new regulations. I ask that the planning board hold this business to additional environmental standards by requiring a groundwater monitoring plan where monitoring takes place at least once a year. I believe there is a way that we can grow while maintaining the charm of Berwick and considering the environmental factors that each growth opportunity brings with it. By taking into serious consideration each opportunity for growth and working with community members to come up with ordinances that feel like a good fit for Berwick, we can plan for the Berwick that will exist 20, 40, and 60 years from now. Thank you. Oh, you can't hear me? No. Okay, sorry. Go to the mic. I don't want to go to the mic. They got me locked in the corner. Hold on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Thank you for letting me know. Um, this one is from Elise Weeks at 29 Hall Road, Berwick. Good evening. I'm unable to attend the public hearing this evening, but wanted to write in with some thoughts regarding the Stop and Go Berwick gas station and convenience store. I'm a resident, parent, business owner, and volunteer in Berwick. When I initially heard about plans for the new gas station and convenience store to be built so closely to farmland and rural residential areas in Berwick, I was saddened and concerned. I applaud the tireless efforts of friends and neighbors in the community to collaborate with our code enforcement officer to craft smart, common sense land use ordinance for these types of businesses. Just going to interject, that wasn't all me, but you guys. Uh, it's clear the new land use ordinances are something our town supports since they were voted in last week. While this is positive development for future businesses, I encourage the planning board to enforce these regulations for stop and go as well before development begins when we'll no longer have an opportunity to prevent the many potential issues this type of business presents. We have an opportunity to reduce water contamination, pollution, decreased property values, potential for crime, etc., before those issues could become something that may never be able to be reversed. I was encouraged to hear that other properties this business owner has are in line with the 3,000 square foot requirements we just voted in, and I would strongly encourage the planning board to require that this location also adhere to those guidelines that are now a requirement in Berwick. Berwick is a beautiful town and we cherish our farmland. Clean air, water, and agricultural spaces are becoming more compromised all the time, and we cannot take what we have here in Berwick for granted. 
Something that I admire so much about this town is the ability to affect positive change. Thank you for your time and consideration. Okay, and then we've got three more. To the leaders of our wonderful town of Berwick. In 2020, I, along with my husband and three children, moved back to Berwick after I had been away since leaving for college in 1998. Parish. Oh, yeah. Should start with the name yeah. at the end. Thank you. Amy Guptill Blow, 534 School Street. Thank it's you. a letter. I just started at the yeah. top. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In 2020, I, along with my husband and three children, moved back to Berwick after I had been away since leaving for college in 1998. We moved from an extremely populated and built-up area, and we looked forward to the breath of fresh air that my hometown would bring. This proposed gas station will be in a beautiful area of Berwick I pass each day. As I looked over the plans in the proposed all-too-large gas station, I was struck with so many cons rather than pros. Honestly, the only convenience I see would be for gas when I go out in the morning to my car, only to realize I'm completely unempty. This happens far more than I care to admit. Same. Uh, the potential crime, groundwater contamination, Increase in traffic, air pollution, noise pollution, light pollution, reduced home value, and the overall dramatic change to Route 4 highly outweighs that convenience of filling my empty gas tank faster. In 2018, four precious lives were lost in a crash on Route 4 in Berwick. Last year, two more lives were lost, and there have been more over the last five to ten years. As it stands, the increase in traffic from Kind Farms is already a problem. Without any traffic lights on the stretch of road, there will be more accidents. As of now, there are eight gas stations within five miles of my home at 534 School Street, approximately 3.5 miles from the proposed site. At least three of those are also convenience stores. It is 12 minutes, just 6.9 miles from the Cumberland Farms in South Berwick to North Berwick. It is 12 minutes, 7.5 miles from the Berwick Cumberland Farms to the North Berwick location. We have small locally owned stores in both Berwick and Summersworth and South Berwick that carry many conveniences. We have Hannaford nearby that carries liquor and groceries. Our town and our area does not need another convenience store or gas station, and certainly not a 7,500 square foot one. It doesn't need more crime or car accidents. It doesn't need a reduction in home values. I stand against this proposal and implore, and implore you to consider the implications of this. Okay, and then this is uh, Pat Bovair and Paul wrote this letter in. Um, my husband and I are writing this letter about the proposed gas station convenience store on Route 4. We have worked with the planning board to develop performance standards for this type of business and have designed standards for the Route 4, 9, and 236 business corridors. Although these standards will not be voted on until November, both the planning board and board of selectmen at a joint meeting agreed that these future standards would become the conditions applied to any gas station or convenience store that was proposed prior to the November vote since the boards had been informed there were no standards for a business of this type in the existing land use ordinance. The performance standards developed for the warrant article are basic. The planning board should be following these conditions as minimum requirements. There should be no negotiating on these basics. It is, the, it is under the planning board's purview to add any additional conditions, particular to the building site in the neighborhood. These are expected to be stricter than minimum standards. The proximity of the proposed station to the town of South Berwick's Water Wells requires the notification of that town for their input on the project. A liability bond or insurance should be required to cover future closure or cleanup. A hydrogeological study should be required to map the groundwater flow and permanent monitoring wells installed to monitor any future contamination. The town of Burke required these wells three decades ago of the Sunrise Mo Hills Mobile Home Park due to the proximity of South Burke wells and local farms that are still active today. A previous example that Berwick should learn from was the groundwater contamination on Cabbage Hill in North Berwick from an underground gasoline tank that required North Berwick to remediate by installing town water to that distant area. We do not want Berwick placed in a similar very expensive situation. We must be sure beyond state-of-the-art minimums that our town, farmlands, and residents are protected from any future contamination. We would like the Planning Board to hold a public hearing for the preliminary plan as well as the final approval so that local residents are well informed of the steps that the Planning Board will take to make this gas station convenience store the best it can be for Berwick, adhering to the minimum proposed performance and design standards and additional conditions particular to the building site and neighborhood. The Planning Board must eva evaluate how the rural character of this area of Route 4 and its property values with its farms, wedding venue, golf course, and residences will be negatively affected by a business of this type. Statistically, property values decrease and crime increases. This proposed business will bring increased revenue to Berwick, but will devalue the surrounding property values and compromise the rural nature and aesthetic appeal of the area. 
the Planning Board has the opportunity to demonstrate to the townspeople that it has the backbone to uphold the goals of Berwick's comprehensive plan by demanding stringent standards and conditions for an allowable but potentially hazardous use that could permanently affect our farmlands and rural character. Please stand strong. And then this last one is from Michael Leterer. He's a Berwick resident and select board member. Dear members of the Berwick Planning Board, I am writing to express my support for the proposed gas station in accordance with the existing land use ordinance rules at the time of the application. I believe that while there are recently approved changes for land use ordinance, this development aligns with the town's vision and contributes positively to Berwick's growth and prosperity. The developer has demonstrated a commitment to investing in the town's success, which is evidenced through their adherence to the established land use ordinance rules. To my knowledge, the developer has not requested one waiver for this project. It is crucial to recognize the value that responsible development brings to our community, providing not only economic benefits, but also fostering an environment that attracts businesses and enhances the overall quality of life for the residents. Moreover, the proposed gas station in Delhi addresses a practical need for our community. During inclement weather, especially for our senior-aged residents, having nearby resources is essential. This gas station can serve as a convenient and accessible resource for necessities, ensuring the well-being of our seniors during challenging weather conditions. Additionally, in the Route 4 safety study run by Goral Palmer in conjunction with the Main Department of Transportation, Southern Maine Planning and Development Commission, and various town officials, released in July of 2023. It is indicated that increased business activity naturally slows the average speed driven in the area. This finding underscores the positive impact that proposed businesses can have on traffic dynamics, promoting safer driving conditions and potentially reducing overall traffic speed. It is important to note that developers already navigate a complex web of state and federal regulations in their projects. Therefore, I urge the planning board to consider the extensive processes they undergo and refrain from imposing additional out-of-scope requirements that may hinder the progress of this project. In conclusion, I believe that moving forward with this project as presented aligns with the town's goals of attracting responsible developments, supporting local businesses, and addressing the overall needs of our residents. I trust that the Planning Board will carefully consider the positive impact this project can have on Berwick and make a decision that benefits the community as a whole. Thank you for your time and dedication to ensuring the thoughtful and sustainable growth of our town. And thank you all for bearing with me. I didn't get a chance to read any of those in advance, so. Thank you, Irish. Is there any, anyone else who would like to speak? All right, seeing no one else, I'll make a motion that we close this public hearing. Second that. Okay, further discussion? Wait, which one seconded it? So that's further discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. All right, moving along, the first public comment. This is open to non-agenda items. Is this a second copy? Seeing no one coming in. Next is approval of minutes. So the first one is September 21st, 2023, and we have the right people. Today it's Paul, Rick, Les, and myself. I know it's been a while, but. Oh, I remember <laughs> them vividly. I <laughs> make a motion that we accept the minutes of September 21st as written. And okay. I will second that. Okay. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? I will abstain as I was not present. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Who, so who abstained? Who, who I, voted? I was not present. So, so you? I you it, it was Paul, Rick, Les, and myself yeah. as voting members. Okay, Rick, Les, Mike. Okay. Thank you, guys. So October 19th, I'm a little... I, I couldn't look to see who was here. I know myself and Phil were, were here. Um, I was trying to look up the minutes. Isn't that all the minutes? They're not all yeah. the minutes? I, was here. I couldn't find it. I was not here. The only one I was was the 21st. Which one? October 19th? Okay, so Jerry was here. Yeah. The, 20, the 19th. 19th. Of October. Mike, Les, Jerry, and Phil. Okay. 
I will make a motion that we approve the minutes as drafted. Second. Second. All right, Les, I heard Les. Um, further discussion? All in favor? I abstain. Okay. okay. I abstain. All right. Next is November 2nd. Um, people who are here is Paul, Don, Les, Jerry, and Rick. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes as written. I will second that. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Okay, and I'm abstaining. And I will abstain as well. Nice, we finally got them all caught up now. All right, so old business, stop and go Berwick, 355 Portland Street, conditional use, R70, lot 12, zone RCI. I do have a couple of bits of information for you about this, Mr. Chair. Okay. Didn't get. All right. Hi, everyone. Wyatt Page again from Matter Engineering representing the Patels. Uh, first of all, I wanted to thank the abutters. There were, I've, I've witnessed some abutters with uh, less structured comments before. I think everyone was very well, well worded with their, their concerns and their complaints. I've made note of all of them. I will be reviewing them again. Um, I made some special note of some particular points of interest, and I will start with just our adherence to the new requirements, the new performance standards that have been being placed on gas stations by the town of Berwick. It's my understanding when we had, we, I remember a before we had even started to present this project to the board, um, I believe it was Miss Beauvert had found out about the project and came before the board requesting that there be additional performance standards. I want to applaud that she has worked hard enough to uh, have these extra things included. I will not, uh, you know, I, I won't lie to any of you. I was, we were a little concerned on our side that it would be something that would impede the scope of our project, that it would be something that would limit us. And I'm very pleased to say that, to my understanding, we are in compliance with all of the new requirements and performance standards that are being placed on gas stations, with the exception of size which I will, I, I believe either Kevin or Robert will speak on later. But I, if, if anyone has, it wants to review these and has looked at our project and believes that we're erring from any of these, as a show of good faith, I am more than happy to look over these new standards. I'm more than happy to try to find solutions that where we can better meet them if we are falling short of them. Because I do understand that this is a want of the people. Our client does care about the town, cares about the people and their wants and their needs. And we are going to try our very best to meet all of these performance standards as best we can, even though we are not necessarily bound to do so. I want to make that very clear. Um, moving on from that, traffic was a large concern from everybody. Um, very early on in this project, we mm -hmm. submitted our traffic, ma traffic movement permit to Maine DOT. And very quickly, we got involved with the Coral Palmer stu safety study on, on Route 4 that was mentioned earlier. This is playing a very large role in our attempts to get a traffic movement permit. The short version of this is, is that they have this large corridor improvement plan that Coral Palmer has drafted up, and we are being tied into this by the DOT. Our turning lanes, the location of the islands, which I believe someone in this vicinity had asked about earlier, all of these traffic improvements and road improvements that are shown on our plans were derived from these Goral Palmer plans. All of our traffic improvements and all of our all of these roadway changes are come straight from this corridor study. Um, my my own boss is family friends with someone whose daughter was uh, who lost her life in one of these crashes on Route Four. We understand the concerns for that. What I do want to say is for anyone who has not seen it already, we do have a traffic analysis that we performed for this project. It's available with the project materials and I believe w is posted with the rest of the project items on the town website. If anyone wants to see that, I strongly encourage you to do so. Um, we had a Diane Morabito of Sewell Infrastructure Solutions, I believe was the one who conducted that study. She's a licensed professional and I think her findings in the study were very all-encompassing. I very strongly encourage any of you to read up on that. Um, I also want to mention 
part of this draft traffic movement permit and all of this stuff with the corridor the the corridor study and what the DOT is asking us to do is that we are actually based on the draft so far we are going to be accountable for the cost of improvements of the turning lanes on Route 4 leading into our property. This is a large cost to us. I want to make that expressly clear. It's a lot of money to make to make those improvements. And I know at least, if I'm remembering right, at least one of the letters, I read all of the ones that I got beforehand, before I came in here, had expressed that they don't, they don't understand why we have turning lanes. They think it will make things more complicated. I want to be very clear that the size, layout, and positioning of these turning lanes was given to us. We did not design them ourselves. The queue sizing and the placement and the effects that they are had on traffic were engineered, to my understanding, by Goral Palmer and looked over by the DOT. I wish I could take accountability for any of that, but we're simply, even the location of our driveway, we, had, we wanted to use that existing piece of driveway that's there currently. We're not able to do so because our driveway location was determined in this scoping meeting that we had with Maine DOT. There's unfortunately a big push and pull there where we have to appease them in order to get our traffic movement permit. We cannot open until we get that. There may even be a period after we've been, if we, you know, assuming we get approved, after we've been approved, after we've constructed, that we may not be able to open until the corridor study and any improvements to the roadway are complete. And I want to just, Try and, the reason I'm saying all of this is I want to express to everyone that our traffic analysis is there for you to read. This traffic study from Goral Palmer, the safety corridor safety study, that's out there for you to read as well. And while it is currently only a draft, I encourage anyone who's interested in the traffic concerns to keep up on it. We're trying our very best to manage all of these things, and I do hear your concerns. I also do want to be clear. I think earlier it was implied that there weren't, wouldn't be additional traffic associated with the convenience store, I'm pretty sure there is, and I'm pretty sure that's covered very extensively in our traffic study. So again, anyone who wants to read over our traffic analysis, I strongly encourage you to do so, and I think we have things dealt with. Additionally, I know at least one person had mentioned want for a second entrance. We wanted that as well. I, any, I hate to even say the words, but if it sounded like we were laughing over there, it wasn't at any of the abutters of the commenters. It was at the irony that we wanted a second entrance as well. We can't do that. The location of our entrance wasn't even up to us. We had to, it, this is all, you know, required by the DOT, by this, all of these things that we have to manage as we are designing our, our, uh, our project and the way that our site is laid out. <sighs> okay, so that's all of that. As far as the drinking water concerns go, we have every intent to meet every need and every want of the board. Anything that you request from us as far as water, anything that we are required to do, we will be carrying out to the letter. We, we, we have our double-walled tanks. We have a petroleum plan that was provided by a consultant. And anyone who hasn't looked over these, again, they're included with the rest of the project materials, and we're happy to expand upon them as required. Um, I, I can't say much more on drinking water and all of these things. I'm sure there will be plenty that the board has to offer us as far as comments, requirements, concerns, et cetera, and we are happy to speak to those, you know, when they come up. Um, and on the topic of lighting, Terry had emailed us earlier today and said it won't be necessary for this meeting since it was, I believe it was day of notice, but there will be a lighting plan. I understand the concerns for especially I can't remember which gentleman it was, but the, the direct abutter had expressed concerns with the headlights. We, as we said, we're open to the idea of having a fence installed. If it's the collective desires of all parties involved, I don't see any reason why we couldn't put up some sort of a fence to hopefully alleviate that. The location of our parking and the location of our stormwater, unfortunately, is pretty well set in stone based on the sloping of the site and the way that the water has to drain. I know it's not, it's not ideal that we have parked vehicles that before they turn their cars off, their headlights will be pointing directly out in a butter. We're happy to do whatever the board requires us to do in order to alleviate that. If a, if a, you know, if a stockade fence or something to that effect is asked for in order to help screen the lighting, we're amenable to that. But as far as the actual lighting plan, uh, we work with a company called Exposure Lighting. And for many recent projects, I have had to request specifically that we adhere to any dark sky requirements. 
And it is my full intention when we request that in the coming days to make it clear to them. We have a lot of abutters that are very concerned about the lighting. We will be asking them to, as best they can, if not completely, to follow any dark sky guidelines in the design of the lighting of this property. And this, this, will, this lighting plan will be posted as soon as it's ready. Once it gets to the board, it will be on the website, and I encourage any who are you know, keeping up with the project to be on the lookout for it. Um, I believe one abutter had also asked about electric vehicle chargers. I'm sure my client will be willing to speak on it later, but it's my understanding that we are, in fact, looking into installing some electric vehicle chargers on the site as well. We already checked this with Diane Morabito, our traffic engineer. She doesn't believe that it will have any adverse impacts on our traffic study on are the traffic impacts of this project. So I think it's well within our scope if, uh, if, you know, if the Patels decide that this is something they want to pursue, I th and I, it sounds like it may be, I think that may be something that would be added to our plans as well. Um, what else is there on here? Um, the one last piece is that I believe there was one comment relating to the coverage of the lot. Um, it's my understanding that we're well within compliance on that matter, but any, if anyone has any, either coverage or otherwise, if anyone has any comments about parts of the ordinance that we're not currently in compliance with, we would certainly like to hear it, and we will do our utmost to address that immediately. Uh, are you, I'm assuming you're privy to the uh, letter from our town manager regarding the uh, South Berwick well issues. You know, that, that, that just was, uh, that meeting happened at 4 o'clock. Uh, oh. He wrote that memo right before he left. That was something I was okay. going to May address once this? he was done. Is it, a, is it appropriate at this time? I, I would like Can you to I, if it's all the same. That would be the chair's decision if it's appropriate at this time. I was it, just something I was going to address afterwards. So this, this letter uh, was drafted today by our town manager. Uh, it says November 16th, 2023, Reason South Berwick Well. Uh, there are, there, there is a two deep water wells, if I'm not mistaken, that are, uh, I'm, on I'm well versed in the area. Neither, okay. there are two, there are two wells that the town of South Berwick, i making myself go cross-eyed, sorry. There are two, two, two wells that the town of South Berwick utilizes for their, um, main water sources. Um, Was one of those them, are not used? Well, they, I, they, I they actually have four and they have two that are in, the, within this somewhat of this area that they can utilize. Okay. They're, whether but they're, they're not currently utilized. Whether correct. they're currently using them or not is not something that I concerned myself with because okay. as far as I'm concerned, they're there. There are potential for them to utilize. We need to protect them as though they are being utilized. Mm -hmm. They are being so, used. Right or wrong, right or wrong, whether they're being used or not, if there's potential for them to be online, we need to protect them as though they are, in my opinion. Okay. May, may I? Yes, but this, this particular one is... Uh, the one that this addresses is 3,700 feet away from. Right. So this letter, I, this is the first time I'm seeing it, but I do think it's germane to the situation. <clears throat> from our town manager, this evening I met with John Leach, South Berwick Water District Superintendent and Irish Griffith Berwick Code Enforcement Officer to discuss South Berwick's well on Junction Road. I subsequently had a discussion with South Berwick Water District Engineer Dan, I believe it's pronounced Flay. I, I hope I'm not uh, mispronouncing his name, and I apologize if I have. Here are the main points and concerns that were brought forward. The first one is Wright Pierce will be reviewing the 1994 wellhead protection head study for the Junction Road well. Next bullet point. Groundwater flow from Route 4 was a primary concern in that report. Petroleum storage was called out specifically in the study, and it states a radial distance of 4,000 feet is recommended to protect the well. Third bullet point, the distance measured from the well to approximately the lot, the lot in question, I'm assuming the lot he's referring to is this project, correct? Yes. Uh, was 3,700 feet. Wright Pierce will be measuring the distance once they have the site plan for more precise measurement. Wright Pierce will be reviewing the materials and conducting their own research and will produce a memo with recommendations. Signed by our town manager, Mr. James Bellissimo. Yes, I would like to add to that that, uh, first of all, Ray Pierce already has it, and they are currently starting the review. Uh, second, a couple of points, this is what I was going to cover when, when I had a moment to speak on it, was um, 
the, they also sent the because I was part of that conversation John had already sent that out to the Maine Department of Health and Human Services drinking water program for their uh, evaluation of it as well and although they will not issue guidance per se the way the engineers were well they will kind of give a don't worry about it or a yeah you need to worry about it thing um, to that end the uh, town manager had suggested that the board consider uh, basically continuing this until we hear back from them on on what that is because uh, something I asked for clarity on that John was able to give me very limited clarity on is, uh, you know, in the discussion I told him, I've read Chapter 700, which is the state's wellhead protection for all of these things. The report itself actually does not call out fuel. It, it calls out automobile fueling stations in one place as far as within, I, and I thought I had that with me, but apparently I put it in the car to bring home this weekend. Um, but it's within a 1,000 feet. There should not be any fuel stations within a thousand feet. This falls outside of that. So I asked where the four thousand foot came from because the state requires a thousand, and um, he said he believed it was a result of just making sure due to other test pits that were dug. But he's going to get back to me with a little more information on that as well. So there wasn't a regulation that was cited for that, or is there no. a regulation? No, that was a that is a and in the actual report itself, it is given as a suggested recommendation, not a requirement that nothing be. And the requirement for the four thousand square feet is actually not for fuel stations; it is for fuel tank storage. So who, large. Who, who makes that recommendation? Who is this that was this from? was the engineers that are currently reviewing it. When they originally used, tapped that wellhead, they are the ones that made the recommendations. That's why they are the best people to review it. They're a third party, mm -hmm. and incidentally, they handle South Berwick and Berwick's water supplies. So is this the '94 so plan? You got it. I'm just reading games. My mouth. Oh yeah. Is it the 1994 wellhead production head study? That's where they. Yes. The yeah. Okay. And so. Um, what is not allowed at all within 4,000 feet of this wellhead would be a fuel tank storage place. So not a fuel station, but the place where the fuel stations are getting their gas from. Hence massive. the tanks in the ground. I mean, is that a no? The no. massive, the massive fuel tank storage place, not a fuel station. They okay. do call them out as they call out fuel tank storage, and okay. they call out fuel stations in that. So the fuel stations cannot be within a thousand feet fuel tank storage facilities, which are the larger fuel stations that supply gas stations, those are prohibited within 4,000 Is that in feet. a combined federal regulation or state? Federal no, that's in the, just the recommendation from the engineers that, that did the well and did the, the mapping for that. That's nothing so from not the just, state. Just for clarity, it's not a regulation. It's not. It's a not a regulation. It's a recommendation. It's a recommendation. Yes, so and just they to are be clear, only because that's two different things. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they are only three hundred uh, feet shy, which is why the South Berwick, rather than throwing a, a and the flag only ordinance on the field, you could find was for a gas station that says one thousand feet. Yes, that is per chapter, and that I do have here is uh, chapter seven hundred. Um, it's the wellhead protection. Um, and that's that's for all. So um, yeah, it's actually <laughs> while you're looking for that, I, I know South Berwick has been very amenable to including us on projects that <coughs> abut our town line. Mm -hmm. um, and given this new information, would it be wise for us to do the same? If, we if already is, are. We, we that's are. that's okay. why this meeting that okay. happened at yeah. four o'clock happened was okay. we're 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 being proactive on that end because we want to. And as I expressed to John and and James today, um, we don't want the applicant wasting time. We don't want our citizens coming out stressing, worrying, or giving up their evenings to to come here if this is something that's prohibited by law. It just feels. We are getting it at the eleventh hour. That's well. This it's, was the, it's difficult the, on our end to digest. We've tried all week. We've moment. been trying all week to make an appointment uh, to coordinate schedules, but this was four o'clock today. Was the earliest that John could meet, and actually, it was originally he was uh, looking towards tomorrow, but in light of the public hearing tonight, he shifted things around and was able to make it work for this afternoon. Gotcha. Um, it would not typically have been required at this stage for for us to necessarily involve them at, at this juncture for this but 
we felt, given the, the concerns of the town, it was worth it. Okay. So procedurally, what is the action that the, the um, that they're looking to accomplish today? They uh, aside from had the public hearing, what is? Oh, they, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Appointment day is in South Berwick. Oh, <laughs> wake, wake up, Hannah. Wake up. <laughs> no, sorry. Sorry, we lost the planner five miles back. Let's start going. They is in the gas station. Um, in theory, the action item tonight would be a uh, vote on completeness of the application to then. We've already done that. No, we've already yeah, done, we've already that. Already done, done that. that. So it would have been. We're not really looking for anything. It would just be an approval. Preliminary <laughs> approval? Yeah. Okay. Can they do that or should they table it like James has requested? Well, she looks into that. Um, I don't know why it's done or if you want me to hit the other couple things that I had for the board. Well, Jerry had something to. Oh, sorry, Jerry. A clarification on what you said. You said 1,000 feet for what? Uh, with, with absolutely no fuel stations within 1,000 feet of that wellhead. Okay. And they are 3,000, as per South Berwick's measurements, right. they are 3,700 feet away. I understand that. Yep. But the wells across the road, which are less than 1,000 feet from the gas station, are all monitored by the South Berwick because all the water comes from those wells under that land. All of those people? John is, John is about having, that's why the third party engineer is reviewing it. Okay. Because they are, their concern um, was not about any of the, they, their their concern is not about any one specific, but everything that they do because that comes from that main 12-inch wellhead. Right. Um, and, and it I, does affect the water table and the wells. Of yes. All, the and that's that, spoken, that is and that is why that's going. That's for a third-party review. Now, something that James did. James and I discussed this after after the meeting and such. Um, you know, the applicant is welcome to either wait for our, our review from the engineer that is currently reviewing it in the main drinking water programs. Uh, John was very clear to me that the main drinking water program won't give any actual like hardcore guidance, but what well, their, their nod or their shutter, um, you're welcome to wait for that and see how it goes from there. You're welcome to do your own at your own expense, have that aquifer area evaluated and provide your own report if you feel that might be um, something that is kind of more to your benefit. And, um, and if I can just get into this a little bit, uh, every every home, every home, whether it's a butter or not, in that particular area of Berwick is sitting on top of that South Berwick aquifer. So every well that goes in there is in that aquifer. So I think that we have to be cognizant of the fact that every time we put a hole in the ground there, we're giving uh, access to the aquifer. And uh, so I just want this study to take that into, into they will, uh, account. It, they will take that into consideration, I'm certain, but I'm sure that, they, that you know, when you point that out, not to play devil's advocate, but not only is every well there drawing off of it, that means every house there is contributing to, to potential contamination. Yeah. It's no different than anything else on that aspect. Right. So the difference would be that I would have eagle eyes on these guys and so on and a bunch of and, others. And, and as there. Jerry pointed out, there, there, are, um, there are tests that are done yes. yearly on those wells. The issue, and uh, which, you know, as I was doing a little studying on this, the issue is that the tests are never done for petroleum uh, particles and distillates. They are only done for bacterias and arsenic and coliforms and those sort of things. Mm -hmm. So uh, if we get down the road on this, and I don't know where we're going, I'm just putting this out there for the board, we need to make sure that the petroleum distillates are tested for as well in those wells if we have a testing program as required by the board. That is um, that is something that I will ask the uh, South Baroque Water District about and ask them if that's something that the engineering, I can email John on, well, I'll probably work this weekend, so I can email John and ask him if he can 
ask them for a recommendation on what he would suggest, the, what the engineers were doing, it would suggest as well, if you would like. Yeah, I think that, that it's just safe board. to do it yeah. that way. It sounds it's, like it strikes thing. me that there should be some type of regulation or, or some type of DEP regulation that covers that. I mean, you know, I, 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 I'm with you 100% that, you know, we certainly want to make sure that the well's not being contaminated. I guess that the question would be, you know, how would we know if there are some petroleum distillates that it's coming from the gas station, it's not coming from the farmer dumping his tractor oil in the ground. I mean, that, that would be my only assumption, you know, because, you know, buying and selling property constantly, you know, we, we always have to have environmental studies done on it to determine if, you know, well, the buying has... With all due respect to the board, too, it depends on what type of system they're putting in because some of these uh, fuel station systems, and I'm sure that poor Wyatt over here has no idea, and I'm not honestly sure if the owner knows in depth about it, but certain types of tank systems have monitoring wells adjacent to them, and that might be just something that the board wants to think about or the owners and the developer want to think about. But I will. what I will do um, is I will email John and ask for recommendations from the engineers that are currently reviewing the water thing. Sure. I think that would, that would make me a little more comfortable. Yeah, I agree. I think now, it would make me comfortable. Now you guys are going to have a well on site as well. Is that correct? That is correct, yeah. So, I mean, the big concern more or less would be your well yeah. at that point. <laughs> yeah. <I> mean, <laughs> yes. That's you would right. be site one, like ground you'd, zero. You'd know ground zero, yes. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah. Yes, Jerry? Uh, to yeah. add to what is being said, there's two projects that have been just approved and are operating. Kind Farms is one and Eleven Pond Row is another. They both have monitoring requirements for chemicals and stuff going into the ground because they are on that South Broadway Aquifer. Yeah, but they're actually required to tank their water and such, so I, because I know, that's slightly different. I don't know that. Does it get done? I've yeah. thought about it. I Oh, no, it gets done. It gets done. I'm on top of your paperwork, Jerry. What? A, come on, man. <laughs> Leo and me and you are pals here. You know I keep track of this. But um, <laughs> anyway, so my my other my other couple of things here that I wanted to um, address is that uh, from the town, if you don't mind, why I'm hoping I'm not stepping on your toes here. So, um, so in regards, wait, just address the water. Um, in regards to building size, one of the things that I was checking for concern with is um, that pesky performance standard that basically says that it's got to fit in with everything in the surrounding areas. So what I did was I pulled a, a bunch of uh, property cards here from adjacent businesses, um, and there are six buildings uh, on that stretch that have been approved and are in use that are within 500 square feet of that size are no less, no smaller than 500 square foot less than the 7,500 they're proposed. Um, although some of them are actually, we've got one that's double and one that's almost four times the size of that. And ironically, Kind Farms is at 25,000 square feet. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much that the no. size of that is outside that of the. Has not been built. No, but it has been. That's approved. what it's approved. No, but they're not going to put it up. It hasn't gone. <coughs> It's, it's what's approved, it's what we have property cards for, yeah. um, and that's what it shows for building size on the, oh. on the property cards. Um, so there's, there's actually um, some significantly larger properties there. Um, the sheet metal shop, uh, obviously Outlook is much larger than that. Um, but that's something that, uh, size-wise, I was concerned about whether or not it would fit with the nature of the surrounding buildings. So I did that little homework, and I figured I'd share it with the board. As far as the loss of value, we'd been hearing that right from the start. I emailed assessing. Um, through assessing, we use MRI. They handle quite a few municipalities. I asked them to research. I asked Paul, the owner, the, the boss to do some research through their other municipalities as well as here in Berwick with the other fuel stations. Uh, they found no evidence of any loss of value for properties adjacent to any commercial fuel stations or convenience stores. Um, and then the last thing is the traffic. Um, please don't talk from the audience and uh, that's the assessors. I'm not trying anything. Um, and the 
So Berwick has long wanted turning lanes and, and islands and such on Route 4 because people drive fast, fast driving leads to bad things. Um, it's honestly, it's been too expensive to come to the top of the pile for the town of Berwick. These, these road improvements, if this goes through and if the DOT has them put in these road improvements, will go a long way towards getting the town to where we want to be with turning lanes, center islands, traffic control. Um, and that is something that James wanted mentioned is that that's something that we have been looking at for a very long time. That's why that study was done. So those are the four items I had that I wanted to, to let you know that homework I had done on my end for the biz, for the board. And if I may, um, I can't speak to the exact comments that we may be making, but it's my understanding that we will shortly be agreeing to a draft proposal with the DOT. So we will have much more specifics for anyone who's curious about these road improvements. We'll have more for you, I believe, at the next meeting. I can't speak for certainty, but it's my understanding that we're going to be offering, uh, you know, an agreement to the draft sh shortly. Yeah, you got a question. You're going to be talking with the DOT. There is a highway driveway entrance rules ordinance from the state of Maine, which states, and I think this is would be considered a public facility because the public's going to use this. It says right on here that will not be granted an entrance into the mobility artery where the posted speed limit equals or exceeds 45 miles an hour. You're showing on all your plans 55 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. That's in violation of what the main ordinance says. So in my mind, the speed limit has to be lowered to at least 40 based on their rules and regulations. I'd have to look into the exact definition that they're using for a public facility. But what, which is uh, kind of dovetails to one of my concerns is the speed uh, in f in in front of here and actually going from mm -hmm. uh, Links at Outlook Golf Course uh, all the way uh, into North Berwick is 55 miles an hour, and uh, just my quick seat of the pants survey of virtually every uh, uh, gas convenience store in the area, it's 35, maybe on 236, it go to, goes to 45, but I don't see any at 55, uh, which I think adds a significant uh, danger. So as you are talking to DOT, I think it's, I, I agree with, with Jerry, it's got to be 35 or 40 miles an hour there to really cut down on those accidents and uh, you know I happen to have been uh, at the at the site at the site of the last accident where someone did die and um, it's not a, it's not pretty and it's people are flying there someone had said during the comments that some people are going 75 and 80 in, in that 55 zone it is a speed zone and, uh, you know, there, there are butters who have dealt with this, and now they're going to deal with it some more. So, um, so I think it's really important that when talking to DOT, as you will, uh, that these concerns be brought up. We will absolutely bring those up. It's been a little while since we've heard from them. I imagine there will be more discussion when we make right. this offer. They also discuss the sight line distance and everything else, which I think for the board, we should have a drawing which shows not just these little pictures, but the whole area with the sight line distances outlined on here. And for 55 miles an hour, it's almost a thousand feet. It's 980. Stopping sight distance. We have that measured on boundary survey. It was presented in our TMP permits. I can provide that to you happily. Um, if you'd like it to be included on the town plans, we can do that as well. Right. I do have assurances already. It is we are over a thousand feet. I believe it was like in the higher 2000s going up toward Outlook, and I want to say it was like 1100 or so. Toward Outlook, it was a, it's, it's over 1000 in the other direction. We did have it measured. We sent our surveyors out there. As everybody uh, said. Hold on, Irish. Public facilities, including but not limited to buildings, property, recreation areas, and roads which are owned, leased, or otherwise operated or funded by a governmental body or public entity. So it would not apply. Okay. That's why they're allowing it. 
So that, that kind of dovetails into that, really, that was some of my notes were about the traffic. And, you know, um, so my question on that, and maybe this is more for Hannah than uh, you, is um, this is a DOT road, right? So, mm -hmm. so they're responsible for getting a DOT permit, mm -hmm. which, you know, how much do we have to do with that? Not Nothing. really anything. Nothing. You so can just acknowledge just that it's happening. Yeah, if it was a town-owned road, then we have some standing. But since this because state because I agree with everything that. everybody has said, and I agree. Like I, I know that road very well. I was just on that road earlier today, and coming out of you know Blackberry Hill Road onto Route Four was, you know, sketchy. Yeah. It took me some time. That'd be a good place for a light for sure. But again, I think that one of the things that's important for people to understand. We all know, you know, we, we just recently had some great training. This is more to the public because I heard everything that everybody said, and I appreciate that. You know, I lived in a house in North Berwick, and I had a beautiful 14-acre field behind my house with the train off in the distance. It was absolutely beautiful. My daughter used to jump off my lap and go running for the slider. The train, the train, the train. And then somebody bought that field and built a house right behind my house, right in between me and the train tracks, you know, and I, I didn't like it. But what could I do? They bought the land. The guy came to me, offered me the land. I couldn't afford to buy it. They, so they, they built. You know, one of the things that's important to understand is that, you know, when people buy a piece of land, they have certain rights, just like we do. If we build a house, we have a right to put a driveway in there. We have a right to have a garage. Uh, and our job as a planning board is to determine when somebody comes before us if what they're asking to do meets the land use ordinance. We don't really legally or morally have a lot of leeway in that determination. You know, either it meets the land use ordinance or it doesn't. We do have some leeway in conditions that we can set, uh, some off-site improvements, you know, some screening, like a fence. You know, I heard the concerns about, you know, the headlights in somebody's driveway or, or, or just looking out your back window and seeing the back of a garage, a gas station or a side. Uh, we do have some some leeway in that stuff. I'm only saying this because I, you know, it's it's a it's a tough spot for us to be in because you know we're members of the community and you know we actively worked on the new regulations for the gas stations. One of the letters was asking you know um, uh, encourage the planning board to enforce these regulations, the new regulations. We cannot. We cannot enforce the new regulations that were put in after this application. Um, we can ask for them to make concessions for those things, but like he said earlier, you know, he's he's met most of the regulations except the size, and it would be, you know, not our, it would be outside of what is our job and our duty to the town because, as a town, we collectively wrote these land use ordinances and voted them in, and it's our job to enforce those land use ordinances regardless of how we may feel about a project. So I, I, that may have been a little ramble in a speech. Just I just felt it was important for the neighbors to understand what our duties and responsibilities are here. Um, you know, we didn't write the land use ordinance. Our job is to enforce it. Um, and it, I think it would be illegal for us to enforce land use ordinances that got voted on after the application came in. Um, Unfortunately, I'll add on to that is is also the zoning, the zoning for this is no, RCI. That was my next thing. It's residential, commercial, and industrial. So there's a lot of things that the town has wanted to put on this road. It's not just residential; it's commercial and industrial. So this is one of the main highways where we put our commercial and industrial stuff. And, and unfortunately, again, you know, one of the things that um, um, Irish kind of took, you know, one of the pieces away that I, I looked at with this is that, you know, this does meet the size and scale and scope of most of the businesses on Route 4, unfortunately, for the people that live around there. That is a, an area where there are big businesses, you know. Um, so I just, I just wanted to make that, you know, make my point that, you know, I'm, I'm compassionate to everybody's concerns and I understand but it's you know we're, we're kind of limited in what we can say no to really mm -hmm. and I do understand that less and uh, I also know that we have an obligation for health and safety 
and uh, health and safety are big issues. And that's why we're heavying up on the traffic and we're heavying up on the water. Uh, those are two really big health and safety issues. Uh, and, and not just for the abutters, but for everybody who drives that road. So we just want to make sure that, uh, that those issues are fully vetted and addressed uh, in this. So, uh, so that's, you know, where we'll be going on this. And, and uh, we do appreciate your cooperative attitude very much. Yes, sir. I'd like to say something else too. We we did we talked about health and safety, but we never talked about the vapors coming out of the tanks from the vents. That's an issue surrounding with the neighbors. If you go look online, you can find numerous studies on that, and also a convenience type gas station uh, brings crime. Kind Farm has been broken into twice. The ATM across the road has been broken into twice. No kidding. Once. Twice. I live Kine twice. Farms once. Yeah, Kai Farms has been once. The arms went off day after day. It's hard to tell. For what it's worth, I did read the comments about crime in these letters today. I did some research myself, and I was I didn't know any of the, anything about the stats. From what I read, something like three percent of crime in the United States occurs at gas station convenience stores. That's news to me. Um, if there are any recommendations from the board as we go through this thing specifically relating to mitigation of crime. I don't know. What, what, however, you may find a way to address these things. Why are you staring at me, Jerry? <laughs> the chief, the, the, the police chief would be the one that would weigh in on whether or not he felt that was an issue. Well, well he, he has. has. He has, he and he said there was no issues. Well, okay. Um, he had no issues with I could tell you that from, there. and I don't know if I'm speaking out of line, and I know James is watching this, so James, you can punish me later, but... Um, I can tell you right now that the uh, there are two fairly good sized criminal issues occurring here in town. One um, is surprising to no one, and the other is uh, actually a, a bunch of <coughs> poorly supervised middle school children wrecking havoc and doing crimes downtown here. There's nothing on, there was nothing that uh, Chief Town addressed in regards to any businesses having any criminal risk right. issues at to, the moment. To go along with what Phil said earlier about South Berwick Water District, South Berwick Police and Fire should weigh in because the first responders will be South Berwick. We can certainly send this to them. And ask them to weigh in. We can certainly, it's... It's definitely being spoken about. Um, I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm out of line because it's easy enough to trace property, tax records, property cards, property deeds. Um, South Berwick is not taken by surprise by this at all because the Patels actually purchased this parcel from one of the uh, water, the board of trustees, a member of the board of trustees of the water district. So they are absolutely 100% fully aware in South Berwick of all of this going on because it was one of their people that sold them the parcel. So they know. They know all about it. But I will send that over to their police and fire as well. All right, so moving on. Um, one of the questions was hours of operation. I was about to, I was preparing to hand the, hand the mic off to the next person anyway. Um, are there any other engineering specific questions from the board or the administration? I have one. It's not really a question, sure. but related to your comment that um, your proposal essentially satisfies all of the new land use ordinance requirements, this, this, yeah. even though we all know that you're not technically subject to them, um, would you be willing to put together a memo just outlining that? I think we could, yes. In addition to any other? Yep. I, th I think we could put together a memo uh, speaking to our, to what degree we're acquiescing to all of this. I do want to be clear, what I had looked at previously was a draft. It was not the final version, and this was some months ago. But I'm, I think we can put, a, put together a memo for that. Okay. Yes. And why you can find that right on the town website. You've got it. And if you can't find it, email and I'll send it to you. Yes, indeed. Does the planning board have a copy of the 
traffic study we did? Yes. So yes. you all can relate to that for that? Yes. Okay. Yes, we can. Right there. Who is we? I was at the meeting. Oh. Mark Pendergast, former select board. No, I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Mark, you're not supposed to speak I'm gonna to the audience. Wyatt, I, I just have one question. Uh, can you just uh, reiterate what the size of the parcel is and what percentage of the parcel this is uh, taking up? Uh, sorry, in what I, I did hear someone say that this goes right to the edge of the parcel, which I did not. She's asking for the parcel size the, and your coverage percentage. The coverage, yeah. yeah where's the where's yeah. lot coverage percentage? Grabbing my question. Maximum lot coverage is 80% in this zone. I don't know what the proposal is, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you remember off the top of your head if that was measured on building coverage or if that was impervious coverage? It's probably impervious, but. Yeah, so uh, the total lot impervious. size for coverage calculations is 103,636 square feet. The proposed impervious coverage is 42,839 square feet, which is 41.3%. Mm -hmm. No. 4220 square feet of the 4170, 41788 square foot of, of impervious coverage is located outside of the subject parcel in the public right away and consists of the driveway and proposed turning lane created as per reference to. So in case anyone is missing the significance of that note, a large portion of that impervious coverage that we're proposed to be adding in that note is located in the turning lanes that were given to us by Maine DOT, and that's where some of that coverage comes from. Mm -hmm. I also do want to express, um, we, while our exact number of impervious coverage may change, it will not, under any circumstances, go over an acre. This would be, cut, be because it would trigger additional levels of DEP review that would significantly slow the process of this project getting approved. So I've been, I've been working with our architects, I've been talking to Robert, I've been talking to Brandon, and while that, again, while that number may not be exact to the square foot, it will not be going over an acre, which is 43,560 <coughs> square feet. So, so if anyone wants, go ahead. So looking further on the general notes, it also, number eight, it says wells of abutting parcels require a 300-foot buffer in which the gas tanks and pumps may not be placed. This does not apply to any on-site wells serving the subject parcel. So that's... Thank you. Yep. And the, those radii are also shown on our plans in numerous places also. Right. Unless there are any other questions, I'm going to net the mic to either Robert or Kevin. I don't know which of them is. All he's coming up, I'll just answer Les's question from earlier. Um, the only action item is a final approval. There's no preliminary approval. So until you are ready for a final approval, the review just continues to subsequent meetings. Members of the Board of Administration, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And for any abutters, I will be around uh, after this. Hold on. If Can you guys speak here, speak in the mic. <laughs> Sorry. It's just so the people that are watching this. People on. at home. I yeah. just wanted to state if there were any abutters that wanted additional discussion with me, I will make myself limitedly available after this meeting, depending on how long it goes, to speak <laughs> with any of you and try to address your concerns. Thank you. Thank you. You don't want to stay out till midnight. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be here. Tonight. No, he no, says he's making himself not available after. after. <laughs> Limitedly available after. No, I'm not being here today. Hello, my name is Kevin Patel. I live in Dover, New Hampshire. So, answering a question about uh, hours for the operation, uh, it will be open at 5 in the morning and it will be open till 11 for the in store. And uh, we will be making canopy and all, uh, following all the requirements from the state required to open gas pumps for 24 hours. And uh, we are doing pumps only for 24 hours by using credit card. Mm -hmm. But for the in-store hours will be 5 to 11. And uh, I also want to answer the question about uh, the one you guys were talking about for the aquifer. So just so you know like i bought a property from the one of the member of south berwick water department and uh, before we bought the property we we did our research about uh, aquifer and everything so 
I have paperwork to show you guys that I did study for that, and uh, I got okay from uh, main water water department. And uh, one of my engineer who does all the petroleum equipments and everything for us, he did all the study. And as per the requirement, we have to be thousands feet away from the aquifer, and we are way far away from that thousand feet requirement. And I have map which suggests uh, we saw that uh, whole uh, situation where uh, where the aquifer is, and uh, I'm happy to share that map with you guys that where it is. And uh, if you guys want it, I can also get you guys in touch with uh, a petroleum engineer who does all the petroleum equipment, and the other one gonna take care of all the petroleum equipment on the site, including uh, including the tanks and the requirement from the state or federal requirement coverage. So thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You. Yep. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, oh, wait, stay wait. right there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Patel, so, I would like copies of those if you wouldn't mind. Yes, I do. Whatever have report copy. you have, if you could send them to me so I can review them, I would greatly appreciate that. Yes, I do. Yep, because I knew there was an aquifer close by because I got aware from the John person Jordan. I bought. Yeah. Yes, John. John, I talked with him also, and I I bought a parcel from the person who was in the water department. And we did our study before we spent money on that property. Mm -hmm. So I'm more than happy to share that all documents you guys needed. So I, I have a uh, question yes. for you. You said Kevin, right? Kevin, yeah. Kevin, um, you know, I heard several people say that this is on top of an aquifer. Yes. And, but I haven't seen any mapping to say it's on top of an aquifer. Um, so you have a map that says it's not on it I is, don't know if it, that yes. matters. Yes, it's next to one. It is, it is up hill of the Love Brook mm -hmm. uh, watershed aquifer area. It okay, is not on. It is answered. not on an aquifer. There is a three. There is a three or four aquifer areas get marked on that map, and those are all close to that uh, Gulf Coast area and all those areas, but not not close to my property. Because I was beginning, I was looking at two properties, and I make sure none of the properties was into that thing. So I have all those documents to show and prove that it is more than 1,000 feet away from aquifer. Thank yeah. you, Kevin. Thank you. And I do have the... Can I, can I ask one question about the lighting a little bit? Uh, uh, I understand the lighting is the lighting, and you're going to do your very best, and we heard about that, about dark sky. Yeah. That's fine. Um, what's the lighting going to change to when no one's there is it going to dim so down because you do have people sleeping across the street and uh and right next to it so uh so i think that's that's going to be a big issue about how bright that those lights are when no one is at the station yep. and people are driving in and out to get gas so any any gas station you've been to you probably see gas station closed we usually keep like safety lights on around the buildings just to make sure all our windows are covered and nobody break into it. Security and purposes. yes, Cops for the security that. purpose, yeah. it will be little light up around the building just to make sure no crimes happen around the building. And for the gas pumps for the 24 hours, to answer your question, when we keep like 24 hours for the pumps, uh, lights only on on the top of the canopy, canopy lights only on, which is maybe like six lights or maximum like eight lights. I think we already have in a lighting plan that how many lights we're gonna put up at the canopy. Okay. So only canopy lights will be on just to make sure people know it's open plus just to make make sure they feel safe well when they're filling up because you don't wanna fill up in a dark right. night. So yeah, that's the only light gonna be on for the night. And okay. the safety Thank lights you. and uh, appreciate that. Thank you. One thing that um, I remember when we were dealing with kind farms, they had a they have a berm um, in front of them. Like so, when you drive past it, it kind of hides it a little bit. Um, a thought for that would be like um, where you have some selected trees to maybe think about possibly just building it up a little bit. So like the cars that are pulling in and parking facing the houses on route four it might be tall enough that it it blocks most cars i think uh, my architect can answer your proper question because we are also thinking about little 
smaller stone wall yeah, yeah, at the front yeah. so that way light doesn't go to the neighborhood. Yeah. Plus, it's better for us also to keep like um, neat and clean and maintain those area. Right. Yeah, so okay. he, he can explain you better. And probably if you see that picture, you one of the picture probably not. Yeah, you see some wall over here too. And he's still working on okay. getting like the wall covered to okay. the front of it. Okay, along with what you said, Mike, along Route 4 right now, going into the property, there's a swale. Yeah. It looks like that swale is going to go away. The runoff from Route 4 goes to both sides. Where's the runoff going to go once that swale goes away? Yeah, my architect would answer all the questions for for those. I, I, as, as when we did the site walk, I'm pretty sure that most of the water goes back towards no, I'm the not corner. Talking about the property runoff. I'm talking about Route 4 runoff. Okay. Not the old road. Yeah. What? No, because they're putting an island in the middle of the road. Well, my understanding the is that true. the entrance is only 26 feet wide. Yes. So I don't know that the entire swale goes away, just probably where the, the way, entrance The way is this going. shows it does. They're planting trees in there. Two, two quick things, one of which is a, is, is a, a, a funny one on both of our comments. Terry, you said you needed a lighting plan. I would like one, yes. I we already have one in oh, our plan right. set, which oh, I, okay. I haven't looked at the plans for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when, you, when I saw that email, I was like, oh, yeah, we, we already have a lighting plan. Okay, it's, great. It's in there. That's sorry, but sorry if I didn't speak to that immediately. Okay, stormwater stuff. So as far as the runoff from the road, um, I can grab the plan sheet for that as well. Is that the lighting this is the lighting plan. Sheet. That is plan sheet eight. It should be the final sheet. Thank you. I'm fairly sure that was. We got our backwards. So. To answer your question regarding stormwater coming off of Route 4, if you turn your attention to Sheet 5 of the plan set, if you have that in front of you, I'm actually going to, I will throw a line up here. So, call me as soon as I as soon as I lose you, if I do. Um, so our subcatching areas be marked by these very dark lines running around here. We actually have our stormwater analysis running all the way out to the current peak of Route 4. So as far as where is that runoff going to go, how is it going to affect the swales, we have our very detailed in our stormwater analysis what our analysis <coughs> indicates will be the changes at this analysis point down here. This is this point being the lower point in the swale on Route 4. And we're showing a reduction for all of our storm. Oh. All if you can use the mic and use the pointer. I know it's kind of hard. Okay. This guy? Yeah. Ah. Just make sure you're talking in the mic, though. Yeah, thank you. Okay, you can, I'll restate all of that really quickly. You can bit. turn the mic, too, Wyatt. You don't. You can, <laughs> you can pick it up and you take can it with carry you. it. I'm, I'm just going to do this. This is okay. okay. Yeah. So, look, as we're looking around our plans here, these dark lines that follow along here, each of these are demarcated by a, a hexagonal indicator. They have numbers on them. Each of these is a subcatchment. Our subcatchment borders. This one here, you can see, runs out past and running through the middle of the proposed island. So we're actually already accounting for all stormwater flow coming off of Route 4. And this is not the existing Route 4. This includes this expanded turning lane right here. This includes the turning lane over here. This includes, I guess it doesn't quite get to that island there, but our analysis indicates, on, I don't know if you can see it past the, uh, the architectural plans, but we have already accounted for any runoff coming off of Route 4, even with the new impervious area. There's a reason that we included it in our coverage calculations. We have accounted for it. And if you want, if you have, if anyone has any specific questions regarding the, our stormwater analysis, I'm happy to answer those via communication. But I just wanted it thrown out there. We have already addressed um, that sort of thing. And that analysis point down Route 4 should be seeing less flow as an average or not just as an average, just across the board. For all the storm events that we charted, you see a decrease at that point. As for what's becoming of the swale, we've been out there, and our surveyors actually had some 
some unique complaints when they were shooting the culvert running under that existing piece of driveway. Right. It is very heavily damaged. It actually is so damaged it is flowing the wrong way. The uphill side is on the downhill end of the swale. <laughs> it's deformed that much. Wow. Um, it's not doing very much right now. If you go down there, I went. I the first time I went over there, it was in the winter, and there was still standing water, even with the temperature well below freezing. There was plenty of water down there. It's not working very well right now. We have a new culvert going in. We actually have a larger area here as well, which hopefully will do a better job of catching sediment, trash, etc. And we're, our culvert that we're putting in should dramatically improve the serviceability of that swale, in fact, just for, for anyone's reference. Do you have any other, any other questions regarding the stormwater stuff for the swale? We can have another one in final. It's got a little bit. Got a lot going on right now. Let it settle. Yes. Yeah, you can send it. Planning a fur with me. Dot mm -hmm. Any information you have that I can read? Okay. Whatever. Ready? Yep. Okay, great. Sorry. No, not a problem. He needs my email address. He's already on top of forwarding me the stuff that I asked him for. Perfect. So Perfect. I'm not going to argue. I'll look at it this weekend. So, again, I'm Robert Wedemeyer. I'm with Winter Holbin. Uh, we are the architect on this. So, I'm just kind of here to talk a little bit about the architecture of the building. Um, hey, Mark. Hopefully, Why? address a little bit of up. the size concern. <laughs> um, go from there. So, um, as we kind of mentioned in our uh, narrative here, uh, we're kind of taking a, a, a different approach to sort of the rural structure. Um, the shed roof, which is the majority of the shape of these, is uh, a, a very traditional and uh, rural. It's the most utilitarian shape for a roof. Um, it's used all over the country, including New England. So we basically wanted to sort of expand on that, mainly due to the fact that the client was um, challenging us to uh, try to create a building that doesn't really look like a gas station as far as the structure. Um, so I heard Cumberland Farms mentioned a few times, but uh, we didn't really want to replicate that. We didn't want to put up a little barn look um, as it's just, it's pretending to be something it actually is. But at the same time, we wanted to take, you know, aspects of the countryside. Um, you know, we're using very natural materials, very earthy tones. We've got stone as part of the material list. We've got uh, these exposed uh, glue laminated wood structure that we're looking to do, which kind of plays off of the whole timber structure that you see in a lot of these buildings. Um, we're looking at, um, you know, just some very simple metal trim. Uh, this sort of, again, I mean, there's metal silos around them. Um, so basically, <coughs> keeping with the material palette that's in the area, we're changing geometry a little bit. We're very cognizant that um, it is a long building, um, as people have pointed out. We, uh, we look to address this by basically creating three separate volumes and um, letting these volumes complement each other, but also break it up. So when you look at it, it isn't just a 125-foot-long wall. You know, the, the, again, the concept was plenty of buildings you can see. This was the main original building. It's the big mass, and then we have this addition to one side, this addition to the other side. Uh, and we're, again, playing off of sort of that idea. That's the architectural support part of it. It's 7,500 square feet. Part of it's because the clients pushed us to, this is sort of like their flagship location. This is wanting to be more of a market. It wants to be um, a bigger deli 
You know, it wants to be um, wants to be more than just a gas station. Uh, you know, a lot of people, and we even put in our narrative. You know, we say convenience store, but if we look at it as a market, it's, it's a small market. It's not a hand of food. Um, so I just wanted to address that. Um, more specific, some of the concerns with lighting. Um, it's hard to see in the perspective here, but the fuel canopy actually is shedded so that the high end is facing towards the actual uh, main building store. Um, that's done on purpose so that when there are lights up in that canopy, you're not going to have, you know, it's going to help that the roof's going to help uh, shield some of that from the street escape and whatnot. Um, but I believe, I mean, that's. That's, that's the architecture spiel. If there's any questions, we'll be more than happy to answer. And, um, I, I do you know. have a question. Yeah. Um, as somebody who really pays close attention to traffic coming in and out of locations when I'm trying to go in or out of locations, mm -hmm. line of sight is really important to me. So like even coming out of Cumbies down here, if you're turning onto School Street and you want to go left towards the light, you got to creep way out into to, to the road to see somebody coming down. So I just wanted to bring that up in terms of, on a picture, it's great to see trees everywhere and potential fences and stone walls going everywhere, but especially out at the entrance, it would be important for me to ask for consideration that line of sight with signs and trees and walls and fences and, and all of that <coughs> stuff be taken into consideration so that people can see traffic coming and going. Mm -hmm as clearly as possible to avoid as much as possible any um, creeping out into a dangerous location. I do love trees. The more trees, the better. I like the drawing showing trees scattered in and about to break up between, between sight lines. Um, I also know that it's just a drawing, so hopefully your trees exist when it's done if this does get approved. I think I'd, I'd just like to make a comment that, you know, I, I'm actually surprised that there's only three gas pumps. So to me, this says this is more of a market that has gas than a gas station that has a market. And I, you know, I, that's a different feel than, you know, like I when, when we wrote the regulations for the new land use ordinance for the gas stations, I, I traveled around and looked at many gas stations and actually got my wheel out and measured them. People thought I was crazy. I, you know, I measured the one across from Key Auto. That gas station, best of, you know, I could measure from the outside is 5,200 square feet. You know, I measured the, I went and talked to the Cumberland Farms here. So I, to me, I think, you know, I mean, gee, this is going to be a beautiful market that sells gas. I guess, I mean, I agree. And I do believe that's done on purpose. Um, and I guess one thing I did point out was the electric charging, because you know they're looking to put in some electric charging stations in there. And as somebody mentioned earlier, you, know, you gotta have to think about the future as we go along this. Um, which, again, charging electric cars is gonna probably take less and less time. But right now, if you need to charge it. It's gonna take some time. This building's here to complement that, so that there's people that come, they can charge their car, they can go in, they can go in and there's a bathroom they can use. Would your electric charging deli. stations be open 24-7 like the gas pumps? Yes. So does your lighting plan include how that area will be lit? Is that area on the plan? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm going to quickly give things back to Robert, but um, yes. There is presently, and I can, it, it's on the lighting plan as well. I believe there should be. You gotta use the point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just a reminder. There should be up in this area, I believe right around here, there's a light post. I, if I'm remembering my conversation with Mr. Patel correctly, we're looking at putting our vehicle charging station right here, directly under that light. Um, now, I do, I, I do know that we just discussed how minimal lighting around the building at night and lighting under the gas station I mean, we may have to go back to our um to our, our lighting people at exposure lighting and we may have to say hey we need you to respect this one here's why here's what's going under it here's the hours of operation here are the about our concerns we could do that that's something that we will consider when we when we go back to this but 
Just it's not shown on the plans yet because this is a new a new change to the plans. Very recent, but. Right around here, at the top of these parking spaces, there should be a light right around here. It's reflected on our lighting plan. It's reflected on our grading and utility plan. That's where it will be. Yeah, I, have, I have a question. I don't, I'm not sure which of you three will answer this, but, you know, um, in this uh, letter from Winter Holbin, it says, uh, an area for recharging electric vehicles. So is are they putting in recharging stations now, or is that for future use? I think it's, yeah, I mean, this is like Wyatt mentioned, this is an evolving process, um, and it sounds like you're doing it right away now. Perfect. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm it, just asking part, that question. No, no, I mean, this is. We went back and forth. I heard a couple right. of people say, you know, this says for, the, you know, a space for charging vehicles, and then, so I just wanted clarity. Are we doing that now, or are we doing that later? We're doing it now. Yeah. Yep. Oh, there we go. So at the beginning, we were not thinking about it because it was like a lengthy process to go through for currently, like they give some kind of subsidy from the state for the electric, to promote electric cars and all. So I had to do some homework for that. And then I did all my research, what I can do and what not. And then we ended up uh, doing electric charging station. We're going to put four, two dual sided. So you can charge like four cars together. And uh, if you can see here, we are also adding some seatings inside because we were not able to put seating. Uh, first, our plan was putting some kind of seating outside, but it was going like a more of that in previous uh, land use and everything. So then we finally did like some seating inside. So people, when they're charging their car, it's like half an hour and 45 minutes. So we want some kind of things where they can sit and enjoy their food or they can wait while their car is charging. And that's why we did that. So we are doing, uh, we are doing charging station right away. And that's why we put some seatings inside. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Patel, question for you, sir. Sure. <laughs> and, and I want to I want to say thank you for your willingness to invest, you know, a significant amount of money into our our town and our infrastructure. It's it's important to us, um, and I think it's important to the voting public. Yeah, thank you. And I think the voting public has has voiced their concerns, and you know, we missed the boat on the land use ordinance. We, we as the board, and we are very well-intentioned volunteers that represent the voting public and, and the people we serve. And, and this is, these are seats of service. We serve the community. And, and I hear the community loud and clear. And I think our fellow board members hear the community loud and clear. And there's there's nothing that says you have to because we, w we didn't get the land use ordinance in time. However, being a good businessman, somebody who wants to assimilate his business into our community and be part of the community, do, do you hear the concerns of our citizens? And are you willing, would you consider any type of concession maybe to a smaller building to, to appease some of those concerns? Is that something you would be willing to do? So here's the thing. Uh, I'm, I'm in the area to do business, right? Absolutely. I want like support from the neighborhood. So my first concern is not to upset them. Mm -hmm. So f over here, I'm proposing bigger size of building, and that's why I bought like a bigger lot, because mm -hmm. my plan is totally different. Once it's done, I'm guaranteed people who are opposite, they're going to love it too. Because you want on that whole route, you want place where you can, if you want like some kind of produce, if you want some little grocery, or if you want bite up sandwich, like you can charge your car, you can get your gas. On that whole route, because our thought was from South Berwick to Sanford and South Berwick to Wells. If you go on main route, there is no place where you can eat food or get some of your necessity things or like get a like bottle of drinks or Gatorades or anything you wanted. Like that, that's why we are proposing big, bigger building to cover up all the aspects of people's requirement. Mm -hmm. And I'm already doing business. I have other businesses which is smaller because I bought as it is. And uh, when I'm doing something, I want to provide maximum facilities possible. And believe me, I'm here to do business and I would love to work with what I can. But for the size wise, I want to satisfy requirement of everybody and that's why we are going bigger. And I guarantee people would love it once it's done because it will be more of their requirement filling up and uh, they will satisfy with it. 
And I would, and as I discussed with all my architects and engineers, that we want to satisfy them as much as we can. And even though fencing is not required as per the ordinance and all, we would love to do that because we don't want to, we don't want to upset our neighbors. We want to work with them and we want to do business in neighborhood. And it's not just first one for me in this area. I have few other ones in this area too. So same people follow me at the other place too. So if I upset them, I would lose business on the other side, on the other, other part of the towns too. So I want to work with them over here. Size is, that's the only reason we did it because we want to, do like a full size daily and everything. Yeah. Thank you. So, it, in short, you you are not willing to concede on size. You want to keep the size. Uh, is what I'm hearing you say, sir. So, I just, the only reason I ask, yeah. and I'm not I'm not trying to press the. No, point, I get but it. But as a servant of the public of the town of Berwick, you know, I have a letter from 43 voting people in our town that are. They bring up the same point that I brought up. Are you willing mm -hmm. to scalability size? that those are their concerns. And, and those are just concerns that, as a board member, I, I have to ensure that these people's voices are heard and, and their concerns are addressed. For the size of building is, is as, I, as, as I explained, I'm trying to satisfy expectation of everyone on the road. Mm -hmm. Like if you go down south, like Sitz or Wawa, those are like a huge station Absolutely. and uh, yes, that's what like if you follow facebook and all pe people who has a concern they walk here but a lot of people supporting that thing too that they want something like wawa or seats or something so that's what our major like if you see the building look and all it's probably it will reflect the look of wawa or seat, uh, seats kind of building and that's why we are proposing bigger where we can satisfy all requirement of people Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have a question that probably Wyatt would answer best, I, if you don't mind taking another walk. Great walk. <laughs> so um, the size of the entrance which you are given is 26 feet wide, is that correct? Or yes. roughly? Yeah. Um, is there any consideration on how tractor trailers might want to turn in there to uh, either get fuel or charge their semi, which eventually will happen uh, at the charging station? So glad you asked. Yes, there is. Um, when I did our site layout, this was something that I agonized over, actually. I have vehicle tracking layers. They're not shown on our plans, and I can show them to you on the next one if that is your wish. But we sized our lot so that you can take a 45-foot long trailer like a 45 foot long trailer truck and you can run it from any of the new turning lanes you can get it cleanly into the property you can navigate around the building you can pull in alongside the gas if it's if it's a tanker truck to fill up on gas you can pull it in with one loop around um, you can get from the back of the building all the way out through the normal turning lanes it I agree that driveway is pretty tight and I will be straightforward it's going to be pretty difficult for those 40, for, once you get to the 45 foot length, it's well, pretty you, difficult you for. Well, you understand that a, a, a growing majority of tractor trailers are 53 feet long. 52 53. Yes, I do. Okay. Um, we sized it based on, I had asked Mr. Patel specifically what he typically sees for deliveries for gas. But there are a lot and, of trucks yes. that just drive by there, uh, averting 95 per se, mm -hmm. and might want to stop in for topping out their tanks and yep. grabbing a drink. So. What I can offer you there is, if you would like, I can try, it's going to be a little trickier to show accurately, and I don't want to show you anything that's against reality, because it works for a 45-footer. I can show you what it might look like for, uh, you said 53 feet or whatever. Yeah. I can look at, we have, there. Are, there's a bunch of vehicles in our, it's like a vehicle tracking library. I can try to find a larger truck, and I will run it through just to see what it looks like, and I, I, I can like show that to you. Okay, Thank I can you. I can do that. So along with Rick's comment, you know, looking at other gas stations and the traffic that comes down Route Four, you have not only just trucks but you have campers of various sizes that are stuck in traffic most Saturdays and Sundays mm. on that road. Also, yeah. Milan, driven by and not professional right. drivers, right? <laughs> and mm -hmm. most of them will probably at some point want to turn in there as well. Mm -hmm. With one entrance, if you were to have an accident, 
that place is going to be blocked. Emergency vehicles and everything else. There's no way in and out of there with yeah, just yeah, one that, entrance. That's out of their scope, though. That's the state. I, I, I hear your concerns, entrance. and trust me, we want a second entrance. Yeah. We there are draft. There are earlier drafts where we had two entrances. We had one on each end of the property. I'll be candid with you. I don't like the way that the DOT is making it. We're very limited with where we can put our gas. You can look at those well offsets. Mm -hmm. The DOT. We we tried to debate this. This was a very lengthy process. They essentially forced us to put our driveway going straight toward the canopy. It's not ideal. Mm. You talk about those 53-foot trucks, if we were allowed ideal placement of the entrances, if we were allowed two entrances, it would be no issue. Yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. It, you yeah. are limited by it, but it is a fact. Right. Yes, yes, no, I know. And we're trying our very best to it's deal with that. It's causing a safety issue, I yeah. would yeah. think, as well, with this one entrance at that point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's... We've, we looked into it. I think I don't think there's any way we can convince the DOT to go for two entrances, but we will, if you'd like. We, like I said, we still haven't given them our comments on the draft plan. If that's something you want us to comment on, we will. I, I think it's really important that you comment on it because it may make them realize how important either a different um, engineered plan for an entrance might actually benefit for traffic safety. So maybe you get both or maybe you get a wider one or and I know working with them you're you're up against it you know what they say goes but I would at least like to have that common thought on a 53 foot truck okay any other comments on that I'd recommend that as well if we could have an two entrances to this it would be more beneficial than one be I know I especially if our comment has any weight to the state I mean then I'm going I trust me it, it seems very clear that the board wants this. I will, I will, I will talk about, talk to them about this. But I want all of our expectations to be realistic here. Right. I find it exceedingly unlikely that they're going to grant us a second entrance, and I really want them to, and I will ask them to. But I want to be clear. I would not hold your breath on that. Anything else? So, fifty-three foot truck vehicle tracking shown on the next one. Yeah, is the uh, we have not talked at all about signage or what that's going to look like here and where it's going to be, how bright it's going to be, <coughs> and how 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 good it's going to look or how unpleasant it's going to look. So could could you uh, would that be more on the final? Yeah, yeah, that would be more on the final. I think yes, back. we could. Okay, with our next submission, yeah, I, I, I just put it on the punch end. list. Would we, like to yeah. would like to see. We, it. we have a rough worth? location Wait. shown. It's very arbitrary. We yeah. do have, have a sign you. permit, oh, and a sign permit requirement, and we have a sign ordinance. Yeah. So they do have restrictions. They won't be able to do anything that. No neon lights. Flashing. No flashing yeah. neon lights, no scrolling, no internally lit, period. Everything has to be externally lit. Right. Yeah, but we'd like that dark sky. during the With dark hearing. Dark sky friendly. We'd like to see it during the hearing. Lit, yeah. Or during the hearing? Or yeah. is there. The dark, not the hearing, during <laughs> the, the board. At, the next, the at your next meeting, can you please bring us something that shows us what you're planning for signs, maybe? Yes. Thank yeah. you. Sure. As well as your that go. easier? There you go. As well as the traffic plan, please, why? Traffic plan? Traffic plan? Your traffic, traffic. Yeah. your traffic thing you're, you were talking about. If, if you're the trucks. If the draft permit or what? No, no, the, uh, a, a, a drawing with showing the turning lanes. And yes, yes. yes, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. I'm Snickers because I'm getting hangry. Now, I don't <laughs> want to cut them off early, but we do have a couple other things that. Uh, yes. Yeah, if we could try and squeeze them in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think we can push the rest of this to final, right? <coughs> yes. 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 There's no voting tonight. No, no, no. We won't be voting on anything tonight. So. Yeah, since the, you, you said the only thing left to vote on is final. Yeah, there's only yeah, one we're stage fine, of yeah. As far approval. as we're concerned. Okay. So vehicle um, tracking and the signage. <laughs> vehicle tracking. One thing that signage, was brought up was here. another yes, public hearing. Um, should we talk and discuss about that? Is that in our purview today, Hannah? Or if would that be can, the next meeting? I would probably suggest that we have more information from them before. And then schedule it? Okay. Um, yeah. So okay. I would recommend 
next meeting we have scheduling it okay. at that All right. I just so wanted to bring it up because it was a, a topic yep. that was and, and you know uh, I just think that there's a lot of con a lot of public concern to have one public hearing now early on and and have people sitting there saying I never got a chance to yeah. respond well, when, to that when they draft like the final plans and have everything set in more stone than just the quick then we can have another public discussion on and this. And I would encourage the public to keep an eye on the website as documents right. get updated, they'll get uploaded, mm -hmm. and then it's kind of available to you, so it's almost on you to go to the website, look at what's updated, and, and read it so you know what we're going to be talking about mm -hmm. at the next meeting. While I, while I do agree with what Mr. Rain said, I do want to reiterate, if, as it sounds like the board is getting ready to move on to the next item of the meeting, I will be here briefly afterward. If anyone has things they want to ask me about, specifically regarding things that I have said we already have uploaded on the website. Mm -hmm. I'm here. Ask Thank me. you for doing that. Afterwards or outside, please, because yeah. when you guys <laughs> are talking in the outside. audience, outside. I don't mean to keep Thank yelling you. at you you're all, fine. but when you're talking in the audience, yeah. it, the microphones do pick it up. The people at home cannot hear what is being said, and there's no way, even though uh, BCM does an amazing job retouching the videos, they cannot eliminate the background noise, and that's not fair to the rest of the residents. Thank you, Irish. Right. All right. Thank you, Thank everybody. You. All right, quickly Thank moving you. on. Um, we'll try and squeeze these guys in. Um, first is new business, integrity, construction, conditional use, 500 Portland Street, R72, Lot 17, Zone RCI. Thank you. Good evening. That was riveting. <laughs> oh, thank, you, thank you for your patience. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't know. I was, I, was, I was waiting for the pitchforks and the torches to come out. Like, let's go. <laughs> what are you talking about? Like the planning board. Like, oh. Uh, Stop oh, giving them ideas. Get up here. It's getting rowdy. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Thursday night. <laughs> grab some beers. <laughs> Ladies, guy, I'm sure. <laughs> nice. Have a couple. Let's vote. <laughs> can't get any gas stations on budget. So you oh, can't. I got it. Serious. I don't expect so. Believe me. I know it. I, I agonized over here. We're not. We're just I, fully in support of I didn't have the whole process. Exactly. Serious professional process. It is. It is. Okay. I didn't. I didn't I receive one. Plan. I didn't but receive one from him. Conditional use at our property right She's now for cannabis, and we are looking to change that. On building with an open building permit to cabinet shop with the byproduct of sawdust. We're right now. I think we're regulated for eight employees per building. Bay Integrity has two to three. So we don't see an impact in traffic, and we don't see a change in any groundwater use, any groundwater contamination, or any uh, hazardous byproduct, unless you're allergic to sawdust. How much sawdust are you guys storing? I'm actually the building owner. He's actually the tenant. Yeah, you got to come speak up. Come to the mic. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Just for the people that are watching. Yeah, we'd be disposing of the sawdust as quick as it is created. We're not going to be storing it. And that just gets trucked out? Yeah, dumpster. Okay. Take it home, okay. So your your local storage, uh, what are you storing it in? So I have a dust processor that will pick everything up and puts it in a trash bag. Once the trash bag full, we pick it up. Okay. Dumpster. We're not talking like a silo or... Okay. Nope. Okay. Nope. Thank you, sir. All right. And this is just for one of the buildings, correct? This is for one of the buildings. Yeah. We don't have only built one thus far. Right, but is the plans are for 10 or 12 buildings? As the um, plans stand now, there's 12 buildings. 12 buildings, okay. At the rate we're going, yeah. you and I will be sawdust by the time those are done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm halfway well, unless, you, yeah. unless you find somewhere yeah. that fits for that spot. I mean, <laughs> it's possible. We've had, yeah. cannabis hasn't been a bang up. Mm -hmm. so, you know, yeah. I think... With the, the oversaturated market, it's it's hard to find that much volume for a, someone to start up in. Yeah, yeah. everyone yep. wants. Yeah, yep. exactly. So, um, is there any <coughs> questions from the board, from Irish or Hannah or Terry? I was just wondering about the hours of operation. That's okay. all. 
probably seven, seven to seven, seven to three. Seven thirty to four. Okay. Seven thirty to four. Yeah, you just uh, you build cabinets. Yeah. You said. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's in that one building that's sitting back there, the right? One the one that's there right now. It's okay. It looks like it blends in the best they can make it, yep. so it doesn't stand out. It's 500 feet off the road. Yep. You got a gate. We got a gate. Mm -hmm. Yep. We're not touching the field. Nope. We're leaving the scenicness of <laughs> Route 4. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I, I love the field. Right? Yeah, no, you yeah, know? I agree. And it's clay and loom no. mm -hmm. and, and again, no useless. Question. I think it's good for growing yeah. corn. Um, okay. yeah. Yeah. Um, the fire chief and I did a courtesy inspection there. Um, I had already done a, an inspection there previously, but couldn't issue a CO because obviously it's not. Um, this is just back before the board because it needed the, the, the conditional uh, use. Yeah, yeah the added. approval. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't issue a CO. Um, mm -hmm. Prior to issuance of a CO there, they have a couple of things they need to do, including NOx boxes, fire alarm system. Um, all stuff that we discussed on site, they're aware of, prepared to do, and I will inspect uh, for uh, Chief Plant has, has said he's comfortable with me doing the inspection for him uh, before they actually get their occupancy from me. So all of that will be installed in place. Oh, fire extinguishers. Where, where is this building? Or Maggie's. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right next, uh, right next yeah, yeah, yeah. to Got it. Even machine. better. Bingo. Got it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so this is an existing building. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It was approved it's for cannabis. It's and approved. you want to change the use to it? A, was, no. It was. It was. Shop. It, we have an open building permit. We still haven't gotten a CO because we haven't had to use it. They were approved for 10 cannabis buildings and two industrial commercial uses. This is the in, one of the industrial uses. So it's not changing a use, just the two uses for the two industrial buildings weren't defined when they got the full site plan approval? Yep. So now we're defining couple it. Couple years ago. <laughs> yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. this goes back to... Yeah. So one of the conditions yeah. of approval yeah. was that this was the industrial uses ago. had to yep. come back to planning yeah. board. Yeah, because I was here with that. Yeah. yeah, more than likely, this is getting off topic, but on to why, while I'm here, more than likely, we're going to be doing some sort of redesign and change of the master plan for the whole thing. There's just no demand. Mm -hmm. no. And at the time, we were in the process of playing catch up to try mm -hmm. to catch up to it. Yeah. And right. then steel you, delays. When I remember, you guys were like the last license that was approved prior to the, yeah. the cap. Like that, it, you guys are right. Well, then 420, but they already had applications in. Yeah, and then they just got voted in last year. They, yeah, they yeah, were yeah. a no for a while. Yeah, but they were pre existing. Medical. Well, for a medical facility, yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, so tonight is just completeness. Yes. And, and then scheduling the a site work hearing. and public hearing. Yep. Okay. I will make a motion that we find the application complete. I'll second that. Okay. Okay. Further discussion? I will abstain from this. I work for the future tenant. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, all in favor? All right. Are um, you guys going to come out and walk my site? Like, come on, I'm getting shortchanged. we got to see this building. No, no, this we beautiful are. building that's been Terry's built. We, 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 we can do the, the site walk and the uh, public hearing in one day, or you can waive the site walk and just do the public hearing. No, I think a site walk is, is good. Okay. So we'll do it the same day as the public yeah. hearing. Let's do it the same day. Yeah, it's gonna be like we're continuing the other public hearing. Can we forecast this one? other public hearing? It's not continued. No, we closed it. We closed the public hearing. Oh yeah. Yeah, we voted on that. We closed it. We'll have another one. There'll be another one that I understood. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. So, yeah, we want to wait for that other one. Well, why don't we yeah. just... Uh, it would be the 7th Let's do it on the 7th. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now time. I know it's getting dark very early now. <coughs> Is four out of the realm of... There's literally, like, because the use is going to be inside, you got lights in there, right? Yeah. So... Yeah. Not really too okay. huge of a deal so if we go at four and it gets dark. That's right. okay. It'll take you about, I don't know, roughly about what sixty seconds to see yeah. the exterior, yeah. and then <laughs> yeah. they will be inside with lights on. So this for work, with which will be about another hundred and twenty. Is that reasonable? It's yes. December seventh. December seventh. Yep. Yeah, four o'clock. Sure, I'll be here, but I'll try. Okay. Four o'clock for the site walk, and I 
and we'll follow with the public night. hearing. Mm -hmm. And the public hearing will be that day as mm -hmm. well. Okay. I can't worry about the public. public. Yeah. I think I'm going to sit. Thank you for saying. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh -huh. they well, they're next. They're yeah. next. They're, 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 they've been yeah. waiting Except patiently Lisa. as well. Except for Lisa. Lisa's one of your select people. She's just here. Awesome. So. Thank you. She's <laughs> just here. She's just here. She's wow. not here for a reason. Wow. Just She's here. here. <laughs> She's just here. She's gracing us with her presence. She's not just oh, here. Oh, yes. Yeah. Lisa, she is, she is very graciously still here, but she's not here because she's next, is what I was trying to say. Thank you. She's just yeah. here to be here. Thanks. Yep. Thank she's here for moral support. So. All right. So moving on, new business, Berwick Community Garden, uh, conditional use, 20 Public Safety Way, U004, lot 142, zone VO. <coughs> Good evening. My name is Amrita Cottrell. I live at 8A Berwick, Ber, excuse me, Goodwin Street in Berwick. In March, a subcommittee of Envision Berwick decided to pursue a community garden for Berwick as a way to support more local food availability for our town. I began researching and visiting community gardens in the surrounding area to learn more about what works and what doesn't work for community gardens. In April, we conducted a community survey, which gave us lots of really good input. In June, the select board unanimously voted to allow the site of the old Estabrook School behind the police station as a home for the garden. Starting in July, we began holding twice monthly public meetings to gain input from the community about what they wanted in a community garden. In September, we received a $25,000 community action grant through SMPDC to help fund the infrastructure. We now have a core of about eight people attending our meetings and helping with the planning of the garden. We've listened to input from the community and concerns and ideas that have been raised. We've done our best to address these points in our plan and the proposal we are presenting to you. We looked at the comprehensive plan and sought to find ways to have the community garden fulfill as many of the goals as possible. We believe the garden will help to alleviate food insecurity in Berwick and the surrounding communities. We have already set a program in place with our two Berwick food programs to provide them with fresh produce on a weekly basis. We also have a farm, we'll, we will also have a farm cart by the entrance at the garden for anyone to come and get free produce as needed. Our design for the garden not only provides a beautiful park-like setting to enhance the green space that has been set aside by the town, but we also provide garden beds for nearly 60 individuals or families. We have addressed the issue of accessibility by having a dozen specially designed beds for mm -hmm. people who use wheelchairs or walkers. And a large portion of the garden is designed to make gardening easier for people with mobility issues. In addition, we are designing programs for youth that will teach them how to grow food from seed. With those skills, they will start the plants for the community food share garden beds along with helping to care for them and harvest the produce that will be donated to the community members in need. We're really excited to bring this garden to Berwick and we ask for your expertise and assistance to help bring it into a reality. So I got a quick question for you. Is this going to be a cannabis friendly garden? <laughs> okay. I'm, just, I'm just making sure. No. If it's not, I got a building for you. <laughs> <laughs> Where did that question come from? <laughs> I don't know, but well, I it's a community too. garden. Oh. If, if anyone needs uh, medical, uh, no, 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 no. We will and with adult use, I mean, everyone can have up to three flowering plants. Yeah, but the garden will not be uh, going in that direction. Okay. Have you had an opportunity to read the uh, the letter from uh, Chief Town? 
that, that he supplied to us regarding the, the location and is this his concerns about officer safety. Is this recent or the original um, public meeting? Probably not. I think Terry had to push to get something in writing from him today for the meeting. Oh, so no, I have not seen it. So my, my only concern, ma'am, and I, I, I think your endeavor yeah. is, a, is a very worthy endeavor and it's something that our community needs. Um, mm -hmm. We have a very resource-limited public safety division in our town, both the fire and the police department. They, they operate on a finite budget and they provide a very valuable service to our to our town and our townspeople. Um, the police chief's concerns with regard to officer safety um, with the location of the garden, the proposed location, um, as a retired federal law enforcement agent, I, I have to take that to heart. Um, these guys are out there protecting us every day. Um, their job is very thankless. Um, and I think we need more time to digest the comments from the police chief and see if there is a reasonable compromise uh, with regard to location that does not put officer safety at risk. Um, as as ever, the way he stated it in the third paragraph of his letter dated uh, Wednesday, May 31st, 2023. So I just want to make sure we're, we're not losing sight of the police chief's concerns and we are trying to find a reasonable accommodation so you the two can coexist together. Yes, sir. So Dennis Jackson, 8A Green Street. Um, yeah, so we, we read his um, letter from May of this year. And his original concern was people walking around the east side of the police station. Okay. Um, be, um, and he su um, suggested that access to the garden be along the pathway between the police station and the fire station on the west side. Okay. And so that's how we designed the garden. And so access will be, um, will be um, Phoenix management um, handles the, the housing in the old high school. Um, has granted us use of six parking spaces there and that uh, uh, people that park there will come up to the fire station and walk along the, the east side of the fire station building and up into the garden. So we feel that we've addressed that particular concern of the police chief. Okay. His letter dated today, I, I think, is this from him today? We received it today. Okay. So we have not he's just, seen that. He's just asking for a little more time. Um, in the interest for, for all parties involved, could we, is that a reasonable ask? Is that we take a little bit more time and maybe have Chief Town come before the board and express his concerns and we, we can come to a reasonable yeah. compromise? So, so right now all we're doing is looking at completeness. Right. So okay. application completeness. Um, we still have to schedule the site walk and the public hearing. So there, there's still plenty of time okay. for him to dis discuss this. Um, this already is a public land. This, this is town-owned land. Um, the selectmen has already done their due diligence with saying where to put it. Um, now it's just a matter of us making sure the applica application is complete, and then we will do our site walk and um, public hearing. Now, my I have another question. Uh, there's a lot of waivers. There's a lot of waivers. No, no, there is seven waivers. Seven waivers. Now, we would be voting on these waivers tonight. Or should we I mean, table we these? Some, I mean, to we need some time to digest. <laughs> Do we have to? In order to find the application complete, you need yes. to vote on waivers. Right. Now. <coughs> Please hold. <laughs> yeah. I was reading the police chief's thing. It's on, it starts at page 19. Yeah. I, yeah. I love when they're numbered. That's so okay. I just saw the first three. I didn't flip the page. Yeah. So, um, I will say that I have already met with um, Dennis and Emrita, and we have gone through uh, 
their waiver requests mm -hmm. essentially so they didn't come in front of the board asking for a million waivers and yeah you said we just don't have your action. memo on it well <laughs> <laughs> i can talk about it then okay um so everything every waiver that they have requested i have already vetted okay. um before they even submitted the formal application um so my recommendation unless this has changed since my memo which it shouldn't have survey like some of them like I get that there's no septic system being installed so that that's a obvious one. Um, well you have to vote on the waivers one by one right that's correct so why don't you bring each one up one by one and Hannah can speak to it and okay. you guys can ask the questions and we can hopefully get through yeah. here before our brains turn to money <coughs> That already happened hours ago. Okay. <laughs> All right. So waiver one is waiver nine point eight point F point two point B point I <laughs> perimeter survey of the parcel made and certified by a registered land <coughs> surveyor. It says we are submitting the boundary and topographic survey done by Owen Haskell Incorporated, dated May second, twenty nineteen. This map was prepared for the construction of the new Berwick Fire Department. The map has a scale of one inch equals 50 feet, which is greater than the required scale of one e inch equals 40 feet. I can understand that. They just didn't this, do a new one because yeah, we had one we already had one existing from the fire department. That was a recent one yeah. from okay. the fire department. So they're just asking to use the same mm -hmm. yeah. existing. Yeah. I, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we approve that. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Favor one. Waiver two, waiver of nine point eight point F point two point B point four I B on site soils investigation report for subsurface disposal at the site. And the Berwick Community Garden will not be installing a septic system. We anticipate providing a seasonal wheelchair accessible porta potty. The porta potty will be serviced weekly by the provider. I'll make a motion that we uh, move to accept that waiver. I'll second that. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Number three, waiver of 9.8.f.2.c.4, <coughs> erosion and sedimentation control plan prepared in accordance with Article 7.15, if required, and Waiver of 9.8.f.2.c.6, stormwater management plan prepared in accordance with Article 7.17 if required. Excuse me, I have questions on that. Uh, with regard to the sedimentation, um, fertilizer runoff, it's huge areas and other, other places, purely organic, no, no fertilizer, is that... So it'll be an organically, uh, the, the garden will run by organic principles. Um, the, most of the growing will be done in um, raised beds. There will be an area of about uh, 2,200 square feet or so of um, in-ground planting. Um, and those will be, those, those Soil health will be more by um, organic matter instead of fertilizer, and so we're not going to so like use compost. It. Compost, yeah. yes. Yeah. So we're not. So it's not your intent to use no. ammonium nitrate, no. any anything Definitely like that. Not. Okay. It's okay. Completely out Heavy of phosphorus and potassium base. So no. you're not using salt fertilizers. No, salt. Okay. No. All right. Uh. I would make a motion to approve that waiver. Which one? Three, 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 um, four. It's two waivers. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Hold on, I Hannah. think we Hold are on. in the clear for the erosion and sediment control plan. Um, for the stormwater management plan, I don't want to say deny that, but um, we have received comments <coughs> from Christy Rabasca, who's the town she advises on the yeah, MS4 permit. MS4 um, I don't know if the board has seen those or not. But um, 
I have not had a chance to talk with her about it, so I don't want the board to vote specifically on stormwater related okay. things because I want to make sure we're in the clear there. Okay. Um, it's not, I don't think anything is necessarily wrong. I just want to make sure that okay. since there are multiple permits going on on that site, yep. that we make sure we get everything correct. Um, so, but I don't, how do I phrase this? I think we can make that a conditional, you can not deny the waiver, but we can find a complete pending resolution on that. Okay. If I may. If you Wait, hold on. If I may, you guys have a, uh, you've been working with, um, what's his name? Cody? Uh, yes, to to do the modifications for the stormwater permit. Yes, yeah, so, so um, I've been in direct contact with uh, Cody, and I can't remember his last name. And that's Christy. Christy or Raska put them in contact. That's why okay. I bring it up. Okay. Um, so, um, Department of Environmental Protection, he's reviewed the design and um, finds that it'll have no impact on the MS4 system. It'll be right next to the, the garden. The, so, all storm runoff from the garden is completely accounted for by the existing stormwater system um, mm -hmm. and there, there's in his mind there's no issue he uh, says that we can qualify for a minor stormwater revision uh, which is um, just have to submit a, a small fee and um, a plan and a, yeah, it's basically and an amendment yeah, yeah. amendment and it's it's not a, not a deal to him. So, so why would we request a waiver? So I'm requesting the waiver because the town um, has um, a set of rules that duplicate the state's review of the MS4 system. So they're basically, I think, what they... Hannah's reading. We lost our mom. So... They could find it complete pending approval of the DEP stormwater modification, right? So I just want to read Christy's email. Um, okay. So she says, as I was reviewing the Berwick Community Garden submittals, I wanted the applicant to review Cody Opropta's that's his name. I don't know how to pronounce it. Uh, email from them or email to them from 10 12 2023, which states the fire station stormwater permit will require an amendment. And then list the permit number. Um, the applicant's narrative incorrectly makes many references to the fire station's MS4 permit needing amendment. It is the fire station's stormwater permit with the DEP that requires amendment, not the MS4 permit. Uh, that's just an administrative misunderstanding to be corrected. Um, I also saw that when they apply for that amendment, the DEP will want to see that the systems are in good working order. The underdrained soil filters at the fire station, which treats all of the stormwater runoff, was not draining properly within 72 hours as required by its design. But I believe this issue has been resolved. Uh, this needs to be checked with the fire chief. Mm -hmm. um, and the public works director and I, Christy, uh, completed an annual inspection of the system on 5-9-2023, which should be available from public works and the fire department. Okay. There were a lot of words, but I just want to check with them to make sure that we're good with. Okay. I was there with her on that. All right, so let's, um, I'll just make a motion for...